Cammy, maybe you can kind of just walk them through some of the adjustment things on the spreadsheet while we get everything up and running. So on the spreadsheet, you will see um, that uh, the numbers only are what I was matching to yours portion. So when you see, um, there, were, there were many, many notes on all of you. So it's, it's uh, evident that there'll be some discussion. Um, but when you see uh, mill levy total, um, it won't quite be the same, but when you look down on dollar amounts of changes, it should be the same as what you had on yours. Um, and we found a few little pieces of revenue that we've added to lower the mill levy at this point. Just as I've said before, as we go through this process, we um, find things and that's part of the process of getting through here is that we find things. Um, did you put in the updated information from the city of Lawrence? I know we got that late Friday. Not late Friday, it's not included into this spreadsheet. I will get it in there today. I wonder if I just turn you on like up there, you don't have to pull it really close though. Yeah. Actually, there was a button somewhere. We'll find it. It's on. Okay, great. It's green. Okay. Finally, finally back. Um, there were, you know, sometimes before we just immediately dig in and start going down line by line, it's helpful to just have some preliminary conversation about kind of what we were thinking. And there's some, I know a couple of you got some questions and so we can answer some of those pieces. So I think just maybe before we start going down line by line, we could maybe just, if each of you kind of want to walk us through what you were trying to put together here. And if you have any outstanding questions that we can answer now, and then we can start working. So you want us to walk through kind of an overall overview of what we were each yes, thinking? Yes, what were your thoughts as you were okay. putting together your part of the spreadsheet? That sounds fantastic. Um, would you all mind if I get started then hand it off to Commissioner Reed? Okay. So, my goal was to not have that complete mill levy increase that we had talked about. And so to find some space for that within the current budget. So I did move some of the um, set aside for the operational increase from the jail expansion to cover some of those costs since we won't have those ongoing costs. Um, I also had some questions about well, I guess let me go down to economic development funding before I go back up to our community partners funding. Um, I did remove $100,000 from BTBC or what's now known as KU Innovation Park funding. That is not removing funding from the money that we spend on their buildings or the money that we spend for bond for them. But I do think that that money made more sense reallocated to some of our social service providers when it comes to our overall goals as a community. Um, and then I did have some questions about some of the set aside funds for um, indigent defense and for the drug court. So my goal was to move money for indigent defense to Kansas Holistic Defenders who would be providing some of that indigent defense. I hope that I reflected that in the spreadsheet properly. And then also move some of the funding um, for increased drug court costs to Kansas Holistic Defenders. I'd like us to get to a point where we had consolidated defense services from Kansas Holistic Defenders for all of our specialty courts and enhanced diversion since we heard quite a bit about movement between those things. I do have a question about how we work with district court on some of those kind of funding decisions and what that might look like. we had also talked about some funding for district, some of the indigent defense funding is in district courts budgets. So how we might also make sure that we're 
and providing some of the full ask there. Um, so yeah, I had a question on that from your questions. So okay. you wanted to move, we, we placed to 425 in commissioner's budget for both drug court, correct? 450 for both drug court, expanded drug court, and enhanced diversion and indigent defense. Yeah, and I was wondering what all was included in that expanded drug court, because there were some drug court expenses that it said this was included in the expanded piece. And yes. so it was unclear to me how that was reflected in the budget. It it did it did not include, did I don't believe it included the Heartland Raid Act position. I no. So oh, and I did not want to fund that embedded right. Heartland so that, Raid Act position. If, I don't think it's a good choice for our community. Okay. So if that's if if you don't want to fund that position, that's just reallocate from that line in CJS. The 250 that is set aside in the commissioner's budget is basically the rest both for DECA and for CJS, their current estimation of what they said their current, what they thought their 2022 costs were going to be was like 287. So I would say it's reflective on the budget options if we could work, walk through which of those if we were talking through. Um, yeah, and I included that enhanced diversion probation officer, but I don't think that was part of their drug court ask. That was their it enhanced diversion. It is for, yeah. Okay. But yeah, that would be part of their drug court ask. It, it also would include the DECA the, substance, the 181, 972 for drug court. Yeah, and it was unclear to me exactly what they wanted to spend that 181. So I included part of that, but not all of it. So part of what we could do, I mean, that's part of why putting it in there, you they could come back and you could have a larger explanation. Um, we could either do that this week or we could do it later. The question is, is if, you know, what dollar amount do you want to hold? So which part of what you reduced there was for drug court and which part was for indigent defense? 50,000 for indigent defense to go into the indigent defense from the drug court allocation. So move that allocation up to 250 and take the 50 from drug court and then yes. leave drug court at 200. Yes. Okay. That, that was what I, uh, that's helpful. But leaving them both in the commissioner's account for now until we get a sense of where we're headed. Well, I thought the indigent defense funding should be allocated to Kansas Holistic Defenders. Okay, let's, let's as we talk through that, I don't have a line to put that on right now since they're a brand yeah. new agency. So I would probably put it in the commissioner's budget until we approved an agreement with them. Totally fine. Yeah, okay. And then I had put 150 for that expanded 181, but that sounds like it should stay in the commissioner's budget till we have a complete conversation about drug court. That was a part of the 250 for drug court. So if you're yep. reducing that down to 200, that would just be the drug court number. Okay. That was line 80. I believe. Cami. Yeah. And then also that DECA position up at the very top, the 35,000 for the enhanced diversion. Sarah said that was also part of their drug court expenses, so that should not have been included then. Do you see what she's saying? Sarah said that the enhanced diversion position from DECA line, oh, line numbers are cut off on this one, under the behavioral health projects. It's the very first one in my column. She said that's also included in drug court. So I guess that'll stay in commissioner's budget for now till we finish having a conversation about drug court. Oh, are you looking at, yes, I'm sorry. Okay, so that is mental health sales tax. So I would like to keep that then. If it's not yeah, and that yeah. was not related to drug court. That's community enhanced based. diversion. Well, the additional ten people for are we talking about the same one? Yeah, the, the additional ten clients. 
the 37,500 is the additional 10 clients and that one's the mental health sales tax. Correct. Are you talking about the DECA substance abuse treatment for enhanced diversion, mm -hmm. the 35,000? Uh, that one I think was, did you rate that median? I think that one was not included. It wasn't built into the budget. Okay. I, I really had intended that to be part of the 250 for drug court. Okay. I mean, and, and I just want to be clear here. Like, like I said, it came late. I said, here's 250 for drug court. We will work it out later. And that's fine. So if yeah. that is all meant to be included in drug court, then that was user error on my part. I was I very confused off. if we were supposed to be allocating that 250 for drug court now or not. And so I had put it into different parts, but we can scoop all that back up and wait and have that conversation later. Delete it. Yep, delete it. Yep, that and as long as we got that 150 out and then for indigent defense, we need to do the same thing for can the on the Kansas Holistic Defenders line. Because I thought that I needed to like, yep. Yeah, so online. Well, that's, yeah. And then that one, indigent defense, yes. As opposed to the commissioner's budget. In the commissioner's budget. Yes. But then we need to remove the Kansas Holistic Defenders because that's where I saw the indigent defense budget going, but it sounds like we need more time on that one. Well, what I need to know is, yeah, if, if you want it placed there, yeah. On this spreadsheet, I would like to know where you're intending to go. And I'm wondering if there's anything you can do to start asking. Okay. then let's leave it as is. And then I'd cut you off. So if you, uh, um, I did fund that additional position for the county clerk's office, as well as the compensation study and the administrative position. I am still concerned about, do we have enough administrative infrastructure in our county? Um, for the sustainability office, I think we started a really interesting conversation about the potential separation. And so having two separate sustainability offices, one for the county and one for the city, I wanna make sure that we maintain the funding we need to pick up the pieces that the city is currently funding, which is 40% of 1.5 positions um, and potentially expand that office. I don't think that I'm ready. I know I'm not ready to commit to the full kind of five FTE proposal that was put in our packets but I do think it's time for us to move towards separation there. Yeah, so I just want to make sure that we have the funds that we need to have those discussions in a way that we can separate if we need to. And then I did move some from the general fund to cover some of the overall cost, but not a huge amount. Those were some of my initial thoughts. My goal was to get around to around one mil increase and fund the things that we need to. Um, I'll turn it over to you, Commissioner Reed. Okay, so um, <clears throat> I definitely, I relied mostly on notes and I 
I got myself tripped up with some of these Excel cells. So I'm just going to acknowledge that I don't know that the numbers are totally reflective. So uh, at first I was trying to indicate um, kind of all the included things that were in red that I wanted to, that I supported. Sorry, let me rearrange. Um, but was noticing that that was messing with the mill levy. So I thought, I realized I needed to just leave those off. So, um, but I'm still not, I'm not sure that I um, indicated correctly. So Cami has my column of notes, but um, I think that I, I also, my big picture goal was to try and get somewhere around one mil, um, closer to one mil than um, 1.5 or 1.6 where we're currently at. Um, I kind of had some similar confusion that Commissioner Portillo did about the the set aside funds for both the, in the commissioners fund. So I think that I indicated um, <clears throat> that that indigent defense um, I did think was going into the um, Kansas Holistic Defenders and so I tried to reflect that I was supporting the, the $425,000 proposal um, and deducting the 200,000 from the set aside was how I was interpreting that. Um, okay. But then um, the other 200 would have had to come from district court, right? And yeah, the so the drug court, I, I mean, I guess largely it's a question mark for me and I figured there'd be more discussion, but initially I, I am not really in support of that expansion currently. I'm interested in seeing uh, some, uh, some time to maybe function at the full capacity that drug court currently is funded for the 15 participants. My question was, I'm still on indigent defense. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, so, okay, as if, well, did you want to up it or did you want to decrease it from district court? Because what, when I had, I had, I mean, there's $425,000 in district court that goes to pay for some of these services. So are we leaving all of that there and adding 425? Uh, no, I think I thought that the, the set aside funds the 200,000 I was thinking of as a, um, was going towards that 425. And then I thought, and then my notion was that there was an, there's additional funds there's, in district court that could get you to 425 if you wanted to. Yeah, that part was the question mark for okay. me. I wasn't so really then, sure where the- Then theoretically we need to reduce district court for her line. Yeah. Right, right. Doesn't that make sense? Is that uh, what you were Yes, uh, you yeah, were, thank you. Okay. from district court, some of the funds from district court. Yeah, some of some of them. Could sense. I jump in while you're making that line change? Cause that, I didn't know if we were at the point where we we're moving funds from district court, but I would like to move 150 from district court indigent defense funding to Kansas Holistic Defenders and 50 from that drug court set aside to Kansas Holistic Defenders. Does that make sense? Yeah, and maybe we can get to it when we get to that point. I just wanted to be clear. I was understanding what she was intending with the spreadsheet, or was it four hundred and twenty-five dollars new dollars, new money? Yeah, in new money. And then, can I ask a question? So, like, if I look at the top of your com spreadsheet, Commissioner Reed, were you subtracting what was put in the proposed budget for the comp study? No, I that was I actually meant to go back up and delete that, and I just missed it because it was initially I went in. Everywhere there was a red number that was included, I was just trying, you know, uh, oh, mimicking okay. those numbers. And some of them populated a mill levy change and some of them didn't. And those mill levy changes started adding up to a point where I was like, that's not right. It okay. If it's included, then it right. wouldn't be increasing the mill right. levy. So I went back and tried to delete all of those. So, so the, it, yes to the, my note in my column is yes to the compensation study. And the um, same with the DECA position at 37,500. The the 10 additional clients treatment, yes. Okay. Um, Thank you. And then was that 
I guess the same for homeless services. Mobile uh, yeah, services. and I just realized I've left out a digit there. Uh, homeless services, my note was about um, wanting to have further conversation about um, the COC position and whether or not, uh, just wanting to have more conversation about that, the qualified mental health position. The way I saw that part, that proposal was it split down the middle is uh, 91,000 per position that was proposed. Um, and I just wanted to generate more conversation about. Sure. Yeah, we will. Okay. So Cami, for you, is it helpful if we each go one by one and continue to do this, or should we Let's, just start with line by line? I, the overview was helpful for me just to okay. orient, and Commissioner Kelly has not gotten an opportunity to do that yet. So if there's other things, Commissioner Reed, you want to say there in terms of the overview, then we will go, we can definitely go line, we will go line by line. Yeah. I think the last thing I'll say is uh, I was is kind of on the heels of Commissioner Portillo's commentary. I was unsure and maybe I guess lacking in confidence, if I'm being honest, about um, maybe taking money from some of the base funding that you had included in the budget and moving it around to human serve to to some of those human services. So the things that I said yes to on the supplemental human services requests, especially and some of those being brand new agency requests, um, I was just accounting for as possible possibly either reallocated jail money or general fund balance um, potential. So I, the number that I um, reflected for the, the non-appropriated, um, that was just kind of a number I, I plucked out of the air because at some point I realized I was being really obsessive about trying to figure out exactly how much I needed to cover all the things that I wanted to say yes to while bringing down the mill levies. So, that, that 750,000 I thought was kind of a high number that I was shooting at, um, just so you know what my, that number changed a lot before I finally just saved it and sent it to Cammie. <laughs> so, you, so your plan was to try to, the 750,000 was what your plan was to try to reduce it down? Say again we, reduce the mill levy ultimately, okay. the mill levy impact and try not to, um, push on the, you know, the percentage of general fund balance that we maintain um, too much. But I, part of that is because I was not sure where else in the budget would be uh, appropriate or a good idea to try and, you know, maybe lower the base amount and reallocate that. Okay. So yeah. anyway, that's why I, that number is a little bit bigger with the knowledge that I thought there might be other sources and places where we could rearrange money, but I was um, not so confident about where to do that. So, you know, Commissioner Portillo's comment about um, BTBC money and lowering that a bit to try and move it around. I, those were things I was considering and wasn't really confident where to land on. So was okay. deferring to conversation. Yeah. And, and I think that's perfectly fine for like where we are right now and walking through it before we wrap up. I want to be very clear. I understand commission intent <laughs> as to if we're reducing base funding for someone that it's that it's that you all are comfortable with where that's at. Okay. So I wasn't approaching it from trying to reduce a mill levy like to one mill or I, I just was looking at the programs and services that we provide and trying to be really thoughtful about what we can sustain um, long term. And so um, some of the things that I have on here. Um, well, and let me first say I, I struggled a little bit with the criminal justice capital like could we take yeah. it out one time or could we take it out forever, right? And, and so I didn't take anything out. I'm fine taking stuff out of it. I just wanted to make sure I understood it before I took it out. Was it more like fund balance where it's one-time money or was it an ongoing mill levy? So I think that will be a good conversation to have. And, um, 
and Sarah sent me an email about it, so I have a little better understanding. But before we do that, I also worried about taking, I didn't know how to take it out of fund balance, it just because it impacts the mill. So it's something tricky in the spreadsheet we've yeah. got to figure out. So I'm just going to sort of give you some overall ideas that I have. Uh, one is I'd like to think about taking that compensation out of one time, the compensation study out of it. I know that we're building some savings in it for actually funding the compensation study down the road. I guess this year I, I'd like to, because we're doing so much around compensation because of the double year impact, I, I was okay with taking that out of fund balance. And that's just where my head was. I, I did have a note on there that isn't included and that's fine, Cami, but um, the artist helping the homeless project, that would be one I would be interested in taking out of criminal justice capital. We currently take it out of behavioral health. And when you read what they do, to me, that felt actually like it's more impactful on the criminal justice side. I know the overlaps of those are, are really, you know, that happens a lot. Um, Mr. Uh, Kelly, could yeah. I just ask one clarifying question? Uh -huh. um, just kind of where this is the administrative cut is on your yeah. line, that is for the compensation study, not for that housing position. Right, yeah, position. but there okay. wasn't a way to put it on that. Yeah, I guess I didn't quite give you a, the comp study is, was lower. Yeah, okay. yeah, and it wouldn't calculate the, no, it's, yeah, you're okay. correct. Thank yes. you. Yes, mm -hmm. um, So um, you'll see on the community partners, it looks like a cut to Heartland. That's really not what I'm intending to do. I, I would like to talk with the commissioners about possibly putting that in the commissioner's budget. I'm not real comfortable with some of the leadership changes that are happening there right now. I want to have further discussions with Heartland. We did that before with Lawrence Community Shelter when they asked for some money is we just didn't allocate it as a way of sort of making sure that we had some deeper conversations with them and then we could decide whether to allocate it or not. Um, so, um, okay, so the Lawrence Humane Society, I'm, I'm gonna go down a bit of a rabbit hole here. Yep. Uh, a bit fast for Oh, me. sorry. So I wanna be clear. So under the behavioral health projects, we increase that amount of funding for artists helping the homeless you you would like us to take that amount and take it out of jail money instead. I'd just like to have a conversation okay. about that. So yeah. let's just, can you put like a note on that line? Yeah, so I didn't know how to note to it, it without Kelly. cutting it. Because there I don't see anything on the sheet for it. Yeah. That's what I wanted to make sure. Sorry. No, you're you're good. Anything else? Okay. Yeah, this is a tricky one because we also have mental health sales tax in here which yes. isn't part of the mill levy so it kind of got yeah and that and i think at the end of this like i want to get you to a space and then we'll show you all where the mill levy's at and then you'll yeah. be comfortable yeah that'd right. be good um are we okay to go on okay so on the humane society i i think it would be i think the humane society will do a better I don't know the better. I, I think what they explained to us will be great. I, I want to have a deeper conversation about who is paying for animal control in the unincorporated area. We have animal control in the city of Lawrence that's paid for by the city of Lawrence. But if we include animal control in our mill levy, we're, we're essentially asking Lawrence residents to pay for animal control outside of the city of Lawrence. Um, it, it seems like we maybe want to have a deeper conversation and think about it from a fire model is something that I would suggest is that since the city pays for fire in the city of Lawrence, the townships pay for fire in the outlying areas. And, and so I just want to have a, a, a conversation about that. I think what they proposed was great. Um, I asked, I also think if the sheriff is doing it now, the sheriff is doing less if they're not doing that, not that they have more needs, but I think we should cut the sheriff that amount and then the sheriff would have to ask for more needs. So it just, I just want to have a deeper conversation about it. Um, so I, I share Commissioner Reed's uh, concerns about drug court and the expansion. I'm just looking at the numbers. They, they have a capacity of 15. Currently they have nine jumping 10 more, I, I just, I couldn't add up those numbers in a way. So I put half, I don't know that that's the right way to do it, to be honest with you, but I, I was thinking five more people if we did half. 
I think I understood the indigent defense. I hear what the other commissioners are saying. I, I'm fine putting it in the commissioner account as we see what happens with bids, if, as we see how that progresses. I just didn't hear enough that it was a fully baked cake yet that I felt um, I felt like Coursera recommended it and the amount was fine. Um, I had a lot of notes on mine, so I'm just making sure that I'm not skipping something. Um, I did have a note on Peasley Tech, and I'd like to have a conversation with commissioners about that. Their fund balance is extremely high. It's more than their operating budget, but I know that's also worked into the depreciation of their equipment and facilities. But I'm wondering if there's some ARPA opportunities there. You know, the city cut back what they do to Peasley, and I'm a huge supporter of Peasley, but I, I just want to be thoughtful about how long we're going to pay down. I mean, we're giving more that, than paying down their debt. Their debt is $300,000 a year. Their asked to us is $400,000. You know, when do we make that adjustment so they can still pay their debt, but the expansion of programs is taking place. So just, I want to dig deeper into that budget. Um, So like emergency communications, and I just had some questions on this, Sarah, you know, it said one time fee, one time, and the same thing was true of the open space plan, but then it had a mill levy number attached to it. So I don't, I didn't know if, how we moved that around. I, I think that should come out of fund balance. It, so. it was planned to, in both cases, come out of fund balance. Okay. I just don't have a, and okay. Cami can go back and verify that, like even, cause it should, yeah, so it's it's already coming out of fund balance. And while we're on that one, Commissioner Reed had a note there too. To so I'm trying to make sure emergency the emergency communications. communications. So your intent was just to make sure that that 150 comes out of fund balance for both of you, or was it? It is it up. possible to put the spreadsheet back on the screen, please? Thank you. Sorry, I know it's a much more nerve wracking thing to have it done in real time in front of <laughs> everyone while being recorded, but it's very helpful to have a shared. I hear you. Thank you, Cami. So your intent was just to make sure that that was clear it was being taken care of with fund balance. Yeah, I just didn't, didn't know how to do the math on the spreadsheet to make sure it came out of fund balance because every time you, you took it out, it would change the mill levy. So we we showed it as built in, and we know it's coming out of fund right. balance. It's reflective on the fund balance totals, so okay. it's not. If you would have taken it out, you would have actually been messing with mill levy, and that right. was not your intent. You're right. Right. Was that what yeah. you were thinking too, Commissioner Reed? So you had a note here to uh, for 150 on those units. I, I wanted to include it. I put a note wondering if it should be, if it could be ARPA uh, yeah. as a one time or the general fund, but I wondered if it could be supported by ARPA possibly. Um, and then the other one, the 11,000, I said yes to, but left that blank because it impacted the mill levy. In a way yes. I didn't expect. Yeah, it either it could be paid for with either ARPA or fund balance. Okay, sorry, Commissioner Kelly. Oh no, you're fine. Open space. I'm on the last page of the printed one now. Open space was the same deal. It, okay. Yeah. All right. And then um, the last one I hope we can have some discussion about is I I understand the need for a planner for zoning, I totally get that. I, I think we need to figure out our agreement with the city of Lawrence. And it, it feels like a little bit like we're solving a problem before we've had that discussion. So I, I think as we go into those discussions, one thing we could do possibly is take it out of fund balance for a year. I know we don't like to hire somebody on one time money, but it seems like, I, I just wanna talk about that because if we're adding a planner in our department, because we're not getting things done that we hope to get done in the joint planning office. 
it seems like we need to figure out who's doing what. And then maybe we do need to add a planner. But as Tanya said, we, we don't really seem to know who's where the boundaries are, where those lines are. I find it kind of interesting. We don't know where the boundaries are in zoning. So um, that's just something to think about and something for us to talk about. Um, I, I do want to reiterate, I think they're overwhelmed beyond belief, and I, I get that, but I, I just want us to be thoughtful about the process for long term if we move into that. So those are just a few. I, um, I would just make a, um, I'm real supportive of a lot of the things the other commissioners um, discussed, especially in that human services category. I just want us to be really thoughtful about how long we can sustain some of those levels. And and you know, can we use ARPA money because it's a one-time deal, or do we think we need to, you know, do we take it out of fund balance, or or do we do we think it's important enough for the community that we continually have a mill levy that is associated with that? And I I would guess I was just a little bit confused on on the criminal justice capital and how how long we can sustain that. So, and we can certainly talk about that. Maybe that's a good place to start before we dive into each of them so you guys understand and we can have that question unless there was a reason. Oh, I just, I agree with that, Commissioner Kelly. I think that we also need to talk about where else in our budget we might be able to reallocate so it can be sustainable. And I think that economic development funds are ones that we didn't talk about a lot, but I think there's a lot of space there to move from some of those economic development funds to more sustainable levels of funding for human services. So on the line for criminal justice capital, Cammie, if you could go up to the top of it. And you can see the. So the line below it in blue, that's criminal justice capital. Yeah. So that. Two million four hundred and forty-three thousand six thirty-eight that we started this year with was ongoing mill levy. It was dedicated ongoing mill levy. Each year we took that amount and put it in CIP. Mm -hmm. So there is a uh, there is a balance, and we could I could show you where it's at in terms of CIP as to what's been accumulated since twenty eighteen on that. And we put some year-end money at some other years. So there's specifically a little chart in there that shows what that is. So it comes through your budget is ongoing and then it moves out. So it is ongoing money. I mean, if you move money from that and decide, no, instead of it being on this line, I want to spend it on, I don't know, um, indigent defense. If you decided you wanted to do that, it, we would dedicate that portion of the mill levy ongoing for that function. Um, and then there would just be less to transfer at your end, which is part of the intent. So there are, you're right. There are two pieces, but this amount, the two, what started the year at two, four now in the proposed budget was 691, um, and was reallocated can go to sustain things ongoing. So as we go through these conversations, if you're like, I'm, I'm not really comfortable having this go towards raising a mill levy, um, but reallocating then what, what Cami will do is add it in that line and then subtract from this line right here so that the mill levy, would it wouldn't impact the mill levy. Does that make sense? That makes total sense. I do have one follow-up question because we have been reallocating to a CIP fund because we do still have renovations and updates to the jail that we need to do. And so yes. when we discuss replacing the HVAC, the parking lot, and some of the safety concerns, we have been reallocating to a CIP fund, so we have some savings to kick off that. This is ongoing that kind of would have been operational increases. And so that operational cost increase is something that we can reallocate to ongoing costs that will make our community a safer, better place. And so we'll need the jail less anyway. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, the, the amount that's in CIP from those previous years, so not 2022, but from previous years is around 11 million. So, um, yeah, that I know oh. you're not talking about that money unless yeah. you're going to tell me you're talking not about, talking about that money. You're not talking about that money. You're talking about the ongoing funds that were set aside for jail operations. But we still don't have a complete estimate on how much jail renovations will cost. They're at the point where they're getting an estimate. Yeah, I have, we have a pretty good estimate for the deferred maintenance pieces, and that's around five million. And that'll be coming to you very shortly. Okay. 
the any sort of retrofit or remodel of open um, open units to a, a different type of unit. We don't have that yet, um, but I feel very comfortable that the 11 million set aside is is sufficient to cover the deferred maintenance piece. That is just what I wanted to confirm. Okay. Thank you. Does that help? It it does. It, just as we do line items in the future, I heard Commissioner Portillo talk about capital and operations within the same line that's called capital. And I think that's that makes that a little tricky in my mind, just how yes. we separate those two out. And and so just and, and I think as you go through here, you're gonna hear me ask multiple, multiple times, do you want that to come out of criminal justice capital ongoing? And that this is what I mean in that situation, or do you want it to impact mill levy or fund balance? Could we then maybe say, do you want this to come out of criminal justice ongoing operations? Cause yes. that's what, yeah. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I'll use that, try to use that. Thank word. you. Yeah. And we will keep being pestering and trying to ask a lot of questions to make sure we're all using the same words. Well, that was really helpful, I think, for us to get a sense of where we're at in terms of how to start the conversation. Um, I say we just start at the top and kind of work our way down. And then I'm going to do my best to try to ask, make sure, you know, this is always a hard time for me because I'm trying to make sure I am capturing what all three of you are saying and that we have everything on the spreadsheet. So just please understand that that's the role I'm trying to facilitate in this. And then, so I'll maybe chime in and ask annoying questions that I normally wouldn't ask, but I'm trying to make sure we have clarity as we move forward. So more questions instead of less would be my preference. Okay. Great. So it sounds like we have a question right at the top under administration. So I know Commissioner Kelly, that was where you had intended for the comp study. Yeah, so I would ask, my idea was to take that out of fund balance. I didn't know how to do, and that wasn't in your recommendation, oh. something we took out of fund balance. So that would impact the mill levy. Correct. Okay. So could I, so my understanding of this is that the compensation study is gonna be well under $100,000. We're thinking that this will likely be in the low tens of thousands of dollars, mm -hmm. but we know that our folks are very underpaid throughout the county. And so we're going to have to increase, or we're hopefully going to be at the point where we can increase salaries based on these new data. And so I kind of like having some ongoing funding that we're starting to set aside since these will be ongoing costs and not just one-time costs of pay increases. Cause we, like you said, Commissioner Kelly, we're at the point where we're paying for deferred merit increases from 2020 because the commissioners decided to hold off during the pandemic and current market merit increases. And looking across some of the salaries, even for some of these starting positions, they're really low. And I'm worried about retention of our really amazing employees if we don't have funds set aside to make sure that we can pay decent salaries in an ongoing way. Um, I was wondering if I had the thought about it being one time for this year with the acknowledgement that it would need to be ongoing. And I wondered if there, if it would serve us to have the compensation study completed before our next budget session next year, which maybe would give us an idea of what kind of ongoing number we would want to build into the budget. So that made me wonder if one-time use out of general fund to sort of start that savings account, uh, so to speak, and then um, and pay for the, the one-time cost of the study would establish it and then give us the opportunity next summer based on the study results to think of a number that we wanna build into ongoing mill levy increase. I think, and I, if both, of the other commissioners want to do this as one-time funds instead of ongoing funds. I, I recognize that that's where the majority is at and I'm willing to go that way. I do just want to kind of say, if we don't set some money aside in our current mill rate to start saving for those ongoing costs, we will be in a position where we're going to have to raise the mill rate next year to do that. Because I, I just think it's very unlikely. I mean, I don't want to get ahead of the data, 
but the idea that the data will come back and say it's not going to cost us money is a very, very small, small chance. So we know this will cost us money in an ongoing way. And if we have the room to start saving for that, we won't be hit with as much of a number that we can't do anything about in the future. Because I'm worried that next year we'll get to the point where we see we really need to be five, seven percent higher than where we're at. And those kinds of raises, we just can't build in with one year's notice or no year's notice at that point. Yeah, I, I understand. I, we're using the phrase savings account. And so I was using fund balance sort of as the savings account in this case. And because we don't have the results from the study and because this is a really, I mean, we have a really small increased assessed evaluation this year. So my my hope was maybe we take a little bit, we, we sort of, our fund balance increased because we went really low last year on, you know, we didn't increase the mill levy last year and it turned out better than we thought. So I, I was just trying to find a way to maybe reduce the impact on our taxpayers this year. I understand what you're saying next year, it may be different, um, but I'm hoping assessed evaluation will improve for next year. Cause this, to me, this is a, this is a long-term thing. And, and so that's, that was just my thinking. And the only thing I'd add is that if the commissioners decided they wanted to pay for the study with one-time dollars, that's certainly something we could do. I wouldn't, I don't know that it makes sense to pay out of fund balance, the remainder of that 70, let's say it's 25,000 for the study, 75,000 to come for fund balance. It, it would be, I wouldn't, I would just say you're going to pay for the study out of fund balance and we move on. Basically um, we'd be removing this $100,000 yes. cost from an ongoing line right. and just pay and for the $25,000 study out of fund balance and yeah. keep it rolling. And if that's what we want to do, because this is a low evaluation year, assessed evaluation year, I, I'm fine with that. I just think that we need to then be ready for next summer when we get the results of that study that we may be looking at a much bigger number than we anticipated without as much of a fund balance for us to cover it next year. And that's okay. I just want us to be ready. So it sounds like we may have two commissioners that are supportive of taking it out of fund balance and for the study and removing this $100,000 earmark. Okay. Line one. <laughs> Check. Check. <laughs> All right. Um, as I go down it, I'm just going to kind of go to where there were questions, but if there's something that we pass over, let me know. Yeah, I, I, for the 35,000 and the 50,000, um, I'm really supportive of those when they seem like good ARPA projects. So that was just kind of a, a note to self, note to us that I think, um, I would like us to circle back. I did. Um, I didn't want to skip over the human services program manager, um, and just wanted to clarify. So my notes indicate that that is included and in reallocated funds. And my reallocated note is that it's coming from that criminal justice. The the on operations support the six ninety one. So um, I just wanted to make sure that was accurate in the um, in the understanding of the other commissioners. Yes, that was, I just said, we need to reallocate all of those operational funds to other things. I did not specify where in the budget, but if we want to reallocate a portion of that mill and directly say, this is for that new analyst position, I'm down with that. Okay. And it looks like we are all supportive of the new analyst position. I'm still worried about understaffing in our administrative offices. I'm fine with that. I, the one thing I want to be thinking about as we think about that fund, that criminal justice operations fund, is that the things that we are funding, we believe are going to lower the rates of incarceration. Um, I believe this one would do that. <laughs> so I, I just want to be thoughtful about that because there was a time when that fund, the, the mill levy for that was put in place by cutting some other things. So um, I just want to, I, always want to be thoughtful about that okay sounds good 
So the next one I had that I wanted to, so Commissioner Kelly had some questions about artists helping the homeless. That was shown initially in the proposed budget as, as coming out of mill levy, not reallocated funds. Um, would you, I don't know how we, we could make, we can make that change. We could go back and adjust behavioral health projects down by that amount and then take it out of criminal justice capital. If that's Sarah, I actually had that noted as coming out of the reallocated funds based on the options I thought. Did I, maybe I just mixed that up and it was it, behavioral health funds instead? It was, it, so there are two sets of behavioral health funds too, cause you know, just make it more complicated. We have the, the property tax side in the general fund and the mental health sales tax. This is not coming out of the mental health sales tax. We, in my proposed budget, I increased the amount of spending on the general fund mill levy side of behavioral health projects from, and I think, yeah, yeah. Oh, was it for mill levy reallocation? Oh, I, oh, mill levy reallocation, not, not criminal justice operating. Right. So that would, so yeah. I just, so we can just move this onto criminal justice operating. Yeah. And I think that we're all in agreement that that would be a great okay. idea. So. Okay. Thank you, Cammie. Yeah. And we'll, and we'll, yeah, we'll keep an eye on it. Um, the, um, next one would be, um, would, do we want, We've talked about criminal justice operating. I think we'll probably just come back to that at the end, unless there are questions at this point on it, or do you have? Well, I, I don't think that there are questions at this point, but we've now just said two things that will come out of that. And so I just wanna make sure we're keeping a running total at some point, because I know that those are, we're starting to deplete that 691,000 by an analyst position and the artists helping the homeless budget. Well, the artist, the analyst. the analyst position was already planned for, yeah. so that was in the proposed okay. budget. So I don't feel like I need to keep track of those. The only new cool. one I'm seeing is artists helping the homeless. Okay, so now we're at perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So that's we can add it back into our behavioral health because that's where it was originally slated. I guess. Or it could lower mill levy. Yeah, yeah. Little, I think that lower mill levy would be an awesome option for that one. Yeah. <laughs> and Cammie will just yell at me if I'm moving too fast for her. Okay. So I don't think we have any other questions on this page. Is there any other on this top page? So any of the, as we move into community health partners or community partners, Burt Nash, Child Advocacy Council, Cottonwood, any of those that we have questions on that we need to talk about on this first page? The only one is that I, I did really, I wanna make sure that while we're not funding many of these supplemental asks, as Commissioner Reed pointed out, there are a lot of things on here that there is a lot of ARPA potential. Yes, and absolutely. We wanna think through. Tons of ARPA potential. That. Yeah. Tons of ARPA cool. potential throughout this entire Yep. Piece. but just not what we're doing today. Yes. So let's, let's move to the second page. Um, the first one where there's conversation is the Heartland Health. I really like what Commissioner Kelly put forward on this, that I also have some concerns about leadership and turnover there. So if we want to move this into commissioner's budget and have some more conversations with them. I think that would be fantastic. Um, I did notice that this was kind of put in without the, it does look like none of us were funding that additional position. So yeah, this maybe just their putting their base funding. into, yeah, I like it. We do have some history of doing this as commissioner Kelly mentioned, we did this one year with an additional amount allocated towards LCS several years ago when there were some concerns, so. Yeah, and I, I appreciate that commissioner Portillo, I, I think. Um, we don't want to hit our most vulnerable population and yet leadership matters. And so how do we balance those two? Just removing the funding. I didn't know how to do that without, <laughs> without how to make it into a different budget. So thanks for that. So we have consensus to do that? 
Yep, I appreciate the idea and it's good to know that that's a option in the future. The next one is then just food. I recognize that, well, I don't wanna put words in your mouth, Commissioner Kelly, but I imagine that the issue here is that we're looking at increasing ongoing operational support. We have seen a huge increase in our community for need. And while we are coming out of a pandemic, I don't see those needs recessing anytime in the immediate future. Um, I am really concerned that we, we saw charitable giving increase throughout our community in 2020 because so many of us were, I know at least in my household, we were at home a lot more. So we, we had a lot more disposable income to give. And I don't think that we're gonna see that continue in 2022. Um, so I, I do think it's important for us to provide some of that base funding for this organization, particularly because it can be used as matching funds for other grants and other opportunities. And that's something that I will return to that theme of many of these organizations were asking us for operational support so that they could leverage those dollars for other types of federal and state funding. And I think that this has been, we've relied on them a lot as a community and it makes sense to increase that funding. I would basically say ditto to all of that. Um, and and I guess just expand by saying that I think, so part of my overall approach was when thinking about kind of all of our internal departments and services is really wanting to focus on some core services and making sure that we were um, taking care of business, so to speak, and so on, supporting the county clerk's positions and such. And then when I thought about um, human services partners, it was also kind of about core and foundational services in the community that I think are really crucial to support. And again, think that um, the operational support that helps leverage federal dollars is an important investment for us and relative to some of the other requests, uh, you know, an investment that, go, that can go pretty far. So that's why I was in support of Just Food along with um, some of the other operational support. No, I, I think as long as we're all agreeing where that, I just wanted us to have a conversation where that money's coming from rather than just an increase to the mill. Uh, you know, if we think that's coming from criminal justice operations, that makes sense to me. Um, I, I just wanted to make sure we had that conversation and, and that we knew it was ongoing. I'm fine with, um anything in this category coming from that criminal justice reallocation or economic development reallocation, I think we can make a really fantastic argument from either of those categories. And as long as we're not increasing the overall mill rate to do it, mm -hmm. let's reallocate from one of those two places. Sounds like we have consensus to do that. We'll take it out of criminal justice capital for now, uh, or operating, criminal justice operating <laughs> Thank for you. now. Good catch. And good catch. And um, and then we'll talk about it at the end. On the note of words, when you guys were um, just talking about the analyst position, you're talking about the human services program coordinator. Okay. Yeah. It's not seeing that word and it. it's probably in the larger narrative, but just right. want to make sure I was tracking. <laughs> Correct. So then the next one would be LCS. Commissioner Portillo placed some additional funds on the LCS request. Yeah, this is one where I, I actually have very similar concerns as Heartland when it comes to overall kind of leadership and turnover and change. And I know that they're doing much better financially than they were when the previous commission had those conversations. I also think that this is something where um, we have seen a lot of conversation in our community about homelessness and we're trying to move to a housing first, less focus on a shelter, but I think that the shelter is important. This is one where if we don't have that support across the board on the commission, I am fine saying we're focusing on housing in other places. Hopefully we don't need that increased capacity in the shelter. Let's keep it low. I, I don't feel as strongly about this one as I do with some other organizations in this category. Yeah, I think for me, um... A more accurate representation is a question mark there because I wanted to have more discussion. I think that um, they do seem to be on really good financial footing right now. So that had some influence on in my decision um, and that, you know, we fund them at a pretty large rate compared to some of the other kind of operational support requests we got. Um, so I am 
I mean, I am supportive of the, the work they do, of course. Um, a little bit concerned about some um, leadership issues right now, but I think more than anything, the fact that they're on pretty good financial footing was kind of a heavy influencer. And at this point, I was looking for some things to, it was initially included for me, I would say, and I went back and zeroed it out more as a question mark because I wasn't quite confident where to move around money. So um, I guess I would say I, I remain open on that one. I am fine with taking from where I put this in there and taking that out and then having a broader conversation when we get down to overall housing support, since I know that there are quite a few yeah. conversations there. So if we want to take this out, I'm good. I just saw this as an ARPA request, just ripe for an ARPA request. And I think um, I'm pleased with the progress the shelter has made. I also think we're constantly reevaluating what role the shelter plays in our housing approach. And so I was okay on this one, taking a pause on increasing funding for the shelter at this time, thinking that ARPA would probably be a good way for all of our housing partners to sort of come together and talk about, I mean, we at $29 million, is that right, Sarah? At $29 million, we, we should be making a huge dent in our housing issues. And so I, I just wanted to pause on this one so I wasn't as supportive of it. Okay. The next one is the Lawrence Humane Society and the Animal Code. I've said what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> what I would say to your comment, Commissioner Kelly, and you know, this does come up time to time, particularly in counties, you know, where you have a number of residents and tax bases inside an incorporated city. Um, Currently, I don't have a way to separately tax the unincorporated area. Um, and it can it would require a lot of work. Um, and I would need to bring the county clerk in here to make sure he felt comfortable in doing it because ultimately it, it, there, I just don't really have a way to only charge the unincorporated area for particular services as we're currently structured. Doesn't mean it can't happen. It just means it's complicated. I totally recognize that piece of it. And I think administratively trying to even go down that road would cost more than what our Lawrence tax base is paying for this. So it doesn't just logically, I don't think that that would make a ton of sense for us to try to go down that road. Um, I think the other piece that Commissioner Kelly kind of pointed out, and I just want to make sure we circle back and have the conversation is that this is now taking work from our sheriff's office, placing it on a community partner and we have not lowered the sheriff's budget. And I think that part of that is that the sheriff has asked for a, a lot more support. I think the sheriff's office has more work than they can do with their current funding level. And so I'm fine with just saying they're absorbing this and we recognize that this will then help with some of that lack of capacity in our sheriff's office and that long-term we need to kind of think through. I think the compensation study when it comes back is gonna show us that we might have some work to do there from a compensation standpoint. So if they can absorb this cost savings right now, then it makes me feel better about not funding all of their supplemental requests. Yeah, I, I hate to, so I'm gonna not look at Sarah when I say this, but it does seem like it has the potential for a city county agreement when it comes because animal control is part of what they do for for Lawrence I just want to be conscious that our and I hate to say it this way but it would mean that our our, our residents of the city of Lawrence would be paying for a service twice so they would be paying for it through the city of Lawrence and they would be paying for it through Douglas County and when they pay through through Douglas County, they're not getting any of the services of that. Now, do we feel like animal control in the unincorporated areas may impact everyone who lives in Douglas County? It might. Um, but I, I just, it's something I, I want us to think about. And so I wasn't supportive of it at this time. I just think it needs more time to, to cook. I'm not sure charging townships for it like we do fire and having us come back is the right way to do it. Um, and there's no way to not charge I, I get the administrative issue of it, but it, we don't have many things like this. I mean, there, there's just not a lot. You could argue the sheriff 
really serves the unincorporated, but the sheriff is a baseline required legislated service that we as a county have to provide. If the city of Lawrence got rid of their police department, the sheriff would then provide services. I suppose if the city of Lawrence stopped providing animal control, we would expect that the Humane Society would be providing animal control for the entire city. So, um, yeah. I, mean, I, I think the bigger issue is we'd expect that the county would be providing animal control. We're contracting out to the parts where we don't have a public agency to do it, but I hear what you're saying. Is there any, so part 32,000 of their request is just a <clears throat> request to increase their base funding, which I'm totally of support of, and especially because it's still at a savings to us comparably that, uh, the 81,000 for the animal code enforcement is, I was bumping around this idea about a, a couple different things, but mostly this, wondering if it is possible to treat it as one-time funds as a bit of a pilot project. And I, before committing to um, a tax, a mill levy increase on it, although it's a relatively small number, so I don't know how big the impact will be either. Um, I don't, that's my thought out loud. <laughs> and I was digging into that and can't, I, as to, cause I, I was also, part of this request was for just expanded care. Yeah. And I, and some was for, I was fine with that. I think I split it out in the budget sheet I sent in. I took out I think we should be paying what everybody else is paying. <laughs> I don't think we should. Get we're it. still underpaying and that's yeah. weird. <laughs> we're still, so I, I was fine. I think it was 82 was what I, and what I put on my page. It's in a paragraph in their um, yeah, I thought I can't report. And that 82 that. number was presented to us by the sheriff and by the, yeah. and during our work session. Okay. My, my only concern with the pilot idea, I, I like it. But pilot, then what? Like, because we're going to have to, like, it's not like there's another contractor that we could go to for these services. I guess we could say we're piloting it. If it doesn't work out, we'll make the sheriff's office do it again, which is legitimately a thing that could happen because they're doing it now. Um, I just think of what is that alternative long term? Are we trying to build capacity? Or are we trying to test an idea? And a pilot seems like we're trying to test an idea. Making this investment now seems like we're trying to build capacity. And maybe we don't know that we want to build capacity in this organization, excuse me, in this organization, but I don't know that we have a ton of alternatives. And they've been a great community partner along the way. But we can certainly, after a year of implementation, revisit like we do with all of our new programs to make sure that the, you know, the 82,000 or whatever, if that's sufficient, because I guarantee you if it's not, they'll come back and ask for additional funds. So it doesn't, I mean, to me, it makes, well, I think we're going to spend if if we built this in and surprise we don't it's only 62 well then it's twenty thousand dollars of mill in a future year that you have so i would just as a course of business recommend that we visit with them uh, you know upon implementation to make sure we're monitoring how this is going the other piece of this that we didn't really talk about with this request because it's small this the whole animal code code enforcement relies upon um using um the creation of an administrative judge which I'm going to use the words judge and quote marks since we have district court judge in the room um, to help hear these. Uh, we have had conversations with Stevens and Brand to sort of act as that um, issue. I've asked them like, what did they think their cost would be for this? And at this point, they're like, it, it seems so small that they really could not provide us a, a separate cost rate for it and that they would just charge the county the rate that it's currently paying for for legal services to serve in this capacity um two questions yeah one do we have administrative hearing officers for other areas of our code and two hearing office administrative law judges don't have to be attorneys stevens and brands are attorneys and so they're expensive do we have any alternative I mean, it may just be such a small thing that it makes sense to have them do it because they already do so many other legal services for us, but. Right. That, yeah. um, we do not have any other administrative code judges. That is a real, uh, some counties have created a code court, like cities have code court that runs through municipal court. Douglas County does not have that. Um, so in zoning code violations, those all 
you know, the, the decision is, is made to defile it civilly and it goes through district court in most cases. Um, this does baby step us into those conversations, which is something administratively I've been, I think I wanna test out. That part I feel like is a test and a pilot to determine. Uh, it could be someone different. I think at this rate, when we're talking just a handful until I get a better sense of it, it makes more sense to have Stevens and Brand do it. And then we can make those evaluations. Um, if this was a model that we liked, if it was something we wanted to institutionalize internally in a different manner, as opposed to having Stevens and Brand do it for us, um, we could certainly uh, explore that as we go. Because I can tell you from a zoning and code side, you know, it's, it's occasionally an issue because um, it, it makes it much more difficult for us to do enforcement because we don't have, there's no one to issue a ticket. There's no court in that sense that does this. It's all handled civilly. So I know that I'm taking you way down a rabbit hole on animal code, but. I do think that rabbit hole is really important when it comes to administrative hearings. Those are typically inquisitorial, not adversarial, like our traditional court system and our traditional court system as an adversarial process, typically that then includes attorneys as advocates right. for both sides. And so I think having an attorney run our codes office as a hearings office like that could bring a level of adversarialism into a hearings process that we don't necessarily need or want because that makes costs exponentially higher. Um, so as we tiptoe down this road, I would like us to really think through are we implementing an inquisitorial process or an adversarial process? What does that mean from an administrative perspective? And how does that affect our budgets long-term? Totally recognize this is not the moment to have that big conversation and that we have a county attorney who can build this into their practice. And it's so small, it makes sense. But if we build it into the practice of an attorney rather than kind of building the capacity administratively, that does set us down a particular path. I hear you, and I think we can be very conscious of that and conversational of that, yet I, I and I am totally understand the concern that you're expressing there, and I think it's something as a staff we can look to as we administer, figure out how to do this um, moving forward, but I don't, I think you and I went down a whole. Yeah, whole so I guess the question that's in front of us right now <laughs> is that. 32,000 is gonna be placed onto the mill. Do we wanna do that other 82,000 in one-time costs as a pilot from general fund or do we wanna do that on part of our current mill rate? It is, I'll be clear, it is currently built in and reassigned from criminal justice operating. So it is not currently impacting your mill rate. But we could always lower if we don't use all of that amount, so. Yeah, <clears throat> I think this, conversation maybe plants me a little more firmly in the idea that I kind of want to pay for it as one time and see I mean it's kind of a guess it's a guesstimate right and there's still a number of unknowns I mean it's an educated guesstimate I don't mean to minimize that it <laughs> I mean you're right we could end up twenty thousand dollars cheaper in expenses ultimately and that would be great but conversely it could be more and I you know there's just a lot of new factors that I um I'm curious to see more fully baked. Um, so I think I, I would like to support that that 32,000 makes sense. And I agree with Commissioner Portillo that it's weird that we're still underpaying, but um, I'm grateful we've gotten closer to that and um, would prefer to use general fund for, for the 81 or 82,000. You mean fund balance when you say general? Yes, fund, yeah, fund okay. balance, thank you. And, and you're telling us you want us to pay for it one time with fund balance and then- Let's next... reassess this pilot next year. Okay. So 32 and 80, what's, our, what's the difference between the two, Cami? Just yes, Sarah. And I think I, I wanna continue to have conversations, not about the service. I think the service and the design is great. How we pay for it, where that money comes from after this year is something I, I want to just have a longer conversation about. And I think since we're taking it out of, um, well, even, I guess we're not taking out of criminal justice operating now, but, but that discussion, I understand what Commissioner Portillo is saying about the sheriff. I just want to make sure we're putting money in the right pots and the right buckets. And so, yeah. Thank you. 
But since I had originally had this coming from criminal justice capital, do we need to, or criminal justice operating support, do we need to increase that amount? Because in essence, this was not impacting the mill levy ever. Yeah, I know. We need to and at least three it. screens. Right. Can we go to ECC and get like a whole <laughs> So, so to me, you're adding back 81559 into criminal justice operating. Do you want to add it back to that or do you want to? Let's add it back there for now. And then when we get to the end, we can have an can overall decide. discussion about mill levy. Yeah. Sarah, may I also just like, put a request out there for a learning session on administrative hearing officers yeah, sure. for our county overall. I mean, it's not high priority, but I think just something that we should have a more formal discussion on. Yeah. Thanks. In, in particularly starting in context to this particular project and just yeah, in general? but I think in general, because okay. I think that this is something that if we're going to go down the road, it may start with animal code, but we might have a broader conversation about codes. Sure. And I would just like us to have, I recognize it may sound a bit academic, but it has huge implications for implementation when it. No, I totally, I yeah. hear what you're saying. Yeah. And then I will also, uh, if this stays, I will communicate back to Lawrence Humane Society that while there is support for it, we want to see how this first year goes. So it's funded. Um, but that recognizing that that amount may need to change. And so as we would approach the 2023 20, budget, we'd have a better conversation as to what enforcement would look like. And then some direction of if that really did materialize itself to savings inside the sheriff or not. And if they could help us keep really great data, then that would help our conversation for next year. Sounds great. Are we good? Cool. All right. The next one that I have is the STA Care Center. I would just. Any point in time when you want a break, you just let me know. Could we maybe plan on a break after we get to the end of? kind of this chunk before we get to commissioner's budget? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Is that okay with both commissioners? I'm gonna make this easy. I think this is fine as long as it comes out of criminal justice operating. Awesome. Okay. The second, the next one on Trinity, I'm super supportive of Trinity. I think they're underpaid. I'm just, I'd love the other two commissioners to tell me, do you see that coming out as criminal justice operating? or, and, and how do we make that connection? And maybe we don't make that connection. That was just my thinking. I mean, I don't feel as wed to, it has to be this bucket. Cause I think that we have overspent on criminal justice as a local community for a very long time. So taking from that bucket and focusing on human services, I am okay with that without the justification. I think we can make the justification for most of these human services. So I don't think it's like a big philosophical thing we need to get into. For this one, I don't see that connection quite as much. I do think that we have a population in our community that is going to need this service at increasing rates. They are a really effective organization and I am concerned, I'm just, concerned that our community needs a service and it needs to be funded and I don't have a better place to find that money. I think that if we had Medicaid expansion, we'd have better overall health funding for our state and for our local community. And we wouldn't need to rely on nonprofits doing so much charitable care, recognizing it wouldn't directly affect them that much, but it would direct our, it would affect our overall healthcare ecosystem. We as a county commission cannot expand Medicaid in the state of Kansas, but we can be affected by it in a lot of really negative, terrible ways. And I think that this is one of them. Yeah, I really support Trinity's work. And um, I think that, yeah, it's not as direct of a line to um, 
criminal justice operating or you know alternatives to jail if we're talking about that um but it is a support service that is very unique in our community and um is generally underfunded i think and they do they do quite a bit so i i don't think i have i generally want to be sure that the money we are spending down from that criminal justice operating um, is as direct a link as possible, but would ag agree that reallocating money to any kind of human services and that direct support work um, is prevention work, ultimately. It's prevention work for health and um, social and behavioral. Yeah, so now I'll answer my own question, which is I think I think what the work Trinity does is as much about caring for those in need as it is about economic development and providing salaries at a reasonable rate for those who need to be employed and sometimes have a hard time getting employment, to be honest with you. And I think, you know, in some ways, if we go away from the, the way that if Trinity doesn't continue, and this is what really concerns me, is that we go to an it's sort of an independent model, which actually creates more crisis where we're not screening those caregivers for young people with disabilities or um, older people. And, and that can create more victims. And I, and I think, so I do make a connection with this. I just wanted us to think that through. Um, you obviously, you both have obviously thought about it much more than I have. So thank you. But yeah, I'm, I'm fine with adding this on. Commissioner Kelly, would you feel more comfortable if we took this from the economic development funding that we currently have? Because that's I, I think it's fine where it is. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think it, you know, I I actually had some ideas about how I was going to fund this, and then uh, listening to Sarah's speech the other day sort of pulled that back, and so I was happy to see both of you um, included in yours. So I'm fine. And I'm not hearing anything here that you know, I from what I. I think we still want to have more conversations about how we're meeting safety net need services throughout the community and what what funding looks like and what our vision is and are we are we so I'm not hearing anything here that is inconsistent with that that can ongoing work in that space. Okay, so we will add that in and reduce criminal justice operating. The next one is the boy, my eyes are getting bad. Is there was a request for Ballard? Mr. Portillo is showing. Yeah, this one. So I was really thinking about the organization as a whole, not necessarily their direct request, but this is one of the few childcare agencies that we have. And we've seen so much discussion around childcare in our community. Um, I have zero support for funding the chamber doing this work, but I do think that we have organizations that are involved in it. And so really it had to do with the overall kind of support for this particular organization. Um, I see that neither of the other commissioners included it, so I am fine kind of letting it go if it's something that we don't see the value of, but I think that it's, and maybe it's one where we can say ARPA, um, but I think that it's overall kind of support for that organization and the ongoing work that they do. I want to be clear that the request was not for child care support. I, sorry, Commissioner, I didn't, yeah. To me, I'm just looking over my notes on this one, and and this looks like something that's going to be covered. Um, well, I hope it will be covered in the new Douglas County Administrative. You know, coordinating this ESC yeah. service. This it, it looked like a duplication there. Maybe it's not a duplication, but more conversation needs to be had around these services. I'm sure Ballard will be involved in it. Maybe as they come back next year. Um, and I do see actually a real potential for ARPA funding here again, so. Yeah, I think my thoughts were kind of aligned with Commissioner Kelly um, that I think there's ARPA potential in this one um, with a few others in particular and saw some um, overlap with the new county funded position. And because, um, the, uh, because Ballard Center gets the largest share of ESC funds currently and that there's overlap in that conversation with this new position for Douglas County and the human services coordination that um, I just kind of want to see what develops in the next year and see about some potential one-time ARPA funds to support Ballard among other agencies and some capacity building, um, but, but not in this budget. I'm good with it being removed. 
So the next one would be the Housing Stabilization Collaborative. This was one where I just put some funding in. I wanted to have kind of a broader conversation because I think that this is an area where we had a lot of discussion around kind of housing overall. I am not quite clear on exactly how these funds will be used, how they'll be connected to the new county position. I'd like more discussion of our overall strategy as a county and conversation amongst commissioners. Uh, <clears throat> I meant to go back and remove this actually, Cami. Sorry, I'm seeing that my late night brain <laughs> missed a few things I meant to go back to um, because uh, it seemed like, well, there was a note that it could be ARPA funded for sure and a developing conversation. Um, I am, I mean, with my service provider hat on the community and seeing the impact of HSC last year, um, I'm really, I'm supportive of it. Um, and I do think that there are a lot of conversations going on throughout the community and things that are um, maybe overlapping in terms of new positions and, and new um, initiatives or funds. Um, so I do think it's worthy of larger conversation, but I want, I want to support the direct service funding. So I think it's a high priority to me and ARPA especially. Um, I'm not sure whether that whole amount needs to be included in our current budget. I don't, so I should say that my plan to go back and put zero there was more of a question mark and like a placeholder because I, <clears throat> um, I think I'm supportive of, of some of it, but I, I don't know how to come up with those numbers, I think is where I was at. Could we put some funds in the commission budget to continue to have this conversation rather than fund this directly to Housing Stabilization Coalition right now? We could certainly do that. Um, I would say I agree with everything that everyone has said in terms of this is an excellent project for ARPA. However, this is a real, if you have room left trying to come up with a fund of this size in the future when ARPA funds go away, it's gonna be hard to come up with that. Um, so I think it just depends on where you wanna come at in terms of the levy and so forth. I'm just really excited to see the progress that, I mean, it's neat to hear Commissioner Reed say, you've seen it as a, as a, in your other work as the result, because that was CARES Act. I mean, it was mostly a lot of what was CARES Act funding. And so I think ARPA funding, I do understand what you're saying, Sarah, about sustaining that long-term. Um, but um, this is a big number, to be honest with you. And um, I just, I think ARPA is gonna give us some direction and maybe, um, you know, really build that up in our community and, and then we'll have to look at and, and ARPA, though it is one time funds, it's not just one year funds, it's not the same as our CARES Act funding. So I think there is some sustainability there. So yeah, and I think um, that the difference between ARPA and CARES Act feels like it'll give us the opportunity to really assess um, a, a more confident number, maybe, you know, than just a True. sort of an unsure number based on um, a, an unusual year, right? And so maybe with a bit more time, we will have an opportunity to know what that kind of ongoing need looks like and have a more firm number. But I, I mean, I'm inclined to want to support it in, to some degree, um, but the commissioner fund is, a, I guess, a good placeholder for right now. Can we come back when we get to the end and see how much money we left have left in criminal justice operations before? Yeah. Yep, down with that plan. I recognize that Kansas Holistic Defenders is our next item, but I wonder if we could save the conversation for Kansas Holistic Defenders for when we discuss the district court budget overall and kind of get through the last few community partners take a break, come back and have that conversation about all of the, the rest of the criminal justice and district court stuff. Is that? Yes. Okay. The next one is tenants to homeowners. Yeah, was I the only one who had money here? Yeah. I think that this was the same, oh no, Shannon Reed did as well. Nope. No, she's zero there. All right, I had the same kind of feeling here, but I think that this is part of the overall conversation around housing. So I'm fine taking this out for now and then coming back with our housing discussion. 
Okay. And then the next one is the willow. I would make the same argument that I made with just food and STA care center. Yeah, I'm fine with this. Okay. okay. And CJS capital for now or operating. Operating. We're gonna yes. get there. Mm -hmm. And then the commissioner Reed that had 48,000 for United Way or was that a leftover? Yeah, I my note on that was wondering. Um, so here's my we didn't have a hearing or conversation with them at all, but um, I have I see impact of the the beginning stages of the United Way Resource Center uh, in Eudora and that resource navigation. And so I really I want to support that and I'm a little worried about it just falling off because there is no funding support for it, but also see that there's overlap with this Douglas County admin position and resource navigation. And so uh, the note I made myself um, was just kind of a question mark about whether or not it made sense to, to fund it as one time. Cause I noticed in their, um, in their narrative talking about, you know, just wanting to, um, I don't remember how they phrased it exactly, but um, not trying to have ownership over whose name is is on the building or the position, and want, and realizing that maybe it would form into something different. So I, I guess I just wanted to have a conversation about. Um, I'm nervous for that to for support for that to just drop off completely. So wondering if some sort of gap funding is a worthwhile investment rather than building it into ongoing support. I'm just curious about commissioner's thoughts. I have a lot of thoughts. Um, I think that I think the work that's being done here is incredible. And I agree with you, Commissioner Reed. Like, I would be really sad to see the work go because I think that what we've seen kind of develop in the community is really phenomenal. My big concern here is kind of the way that this funding is constructed and the role of the United Way in our community. So the United Way has traditionally been more of a funder than a direct service provider. And we've seen a huge increase in some of our other community partners asking us for funding. And I think in part that's because the United Way has decreased the funding that they're giving to a number of community agencies. I'm very confused about the role of the United Way in this particular position. And so I agree with you. I think that there's some overlap with the county resource navigation kind of focus and our development there. I, I don't think it makes sense for the United Way to be kind of the funder of this or to be the agency requesting this. And I, I would have some big concerns with giving this level of funding and ongoing support to the United Way in our community. So I, I think the position is awesome. And if we need to figure out is there another way that we could keep this capacity in our community? I'm totally open to figuring that out and finding a way. I am not open to funding the United Way for this. Yeah, I, I have a lot of the same concerns that Commissioner Portito just said. I, I was surprised to see a request from the United Way to Douglas County. And you know, as we're talking here, we're really increasing our human services support my understanding of United Way has always not been as a provider, but as a um, helping, you know, sort of organizing around human services and how those human services, it sounds like we're taking over some of that work, not entirely, but it just, it seems like United Way's goal is shifting. Um, we support a lot of human service agencies. And I'm like I said, in our hearings, I think just about every one of them could come to us with operational support requests. Um, this isn't one I'm supportive of at this time. Yeah, <clears throat> I'm good to let that go. And I appreciate both of those, uh, all those comments and concerns. I would like us uh, somewhere sometime to just have more conversation about how I think what's going on in Eudora and what seems to kind of be percolating in Baldwin as a bit of a result of that and more and more community connections is really important because 
well, as a service provider in this community, like we have a, a rich landscape of services. Um, most of them are based geographically in Lawrence and serve all of Douglas County, but are not always great in actually getting those services outside of city limits. And so I've seen that shift a lot um, with um, recent AmeriCorps members but in both Eudora and Baldwin. And so um, I just wanna be supportive of that momentum because I think it's important for us to be, uh, it, it has provided a good opportunity to really make sure that Douglas County based services are thinking outside of the city limits of Lawrence and making sure that they are being accessible in other places in the county. So I just wanna say that for the record and uh, I appreciate that um, the perspective about United Ways kind of shifting its role and being unclear about, about that. So I'm, I'm cool to take that out. Great. I think we're at our kind of break point and take 10 minutes or so, and then we can come back and we're making great progress. So thank you. Okay, hey, thanks commissioners. So the next item and, and yeah, I think this is a good one to sort of make sure we're all on the same page is- uh, Sorry, Cammie, would you share your screen again, please? Yeah. Thank you. Um, is the commissioner's budget where there were funds set aside a total of 450 for two different projects um, for expanded drug court and um, institutional defense. Um, so I think what we talked about earlier was that that should be still stay 450 um, but it's 200 for drug court and, or maybe I'll let you all talk there. Well, I think that this is a really important space to have this conversation because I think we have multiple things that need to get funded and then two kind of big buckets that we currently have the funding in. So when it comes to indigent defense, we have needs that are currently funded by the county, which include all of our misdemeanor indigent defense and criminal defense attorneys for our specialty courts, behavioral health court, drug court, and the new enhanced diversion policy or program. That's all county funded. We also have ongoing conversations through our indigent defense work group around our felony indigent defense, which is now all funded through the state and some potential pilot programs that would be state funded that may potentially at some point ask for some county support. None of that felony piece is currently in this budget. What we saw from Kansas Holistic Defenders is a proposal around our current misdemeanor indigent defense. And I would like to have a conversation about consolidating our specialty court defense. I had the chance to observe our drug court on Friday. I have extensively researched specialty courts here locally and all across the country at the federal and local levels. We have a uniquely expensive set of specialty courts. Part of this expense, I think, is the use of panel attorneys rather than an institutional defender's office that can kind of coordinate care. As we talked about, as we talked with criminal justice services, they are also talking about potential movement of clients between enhanced diversion and drug court. And that is something that I think we cannot have done in an efficient or effective way when we have different panel attorneys that do not work together representing clients in those different programs. So I would like to see us kind of have a conversation about what we're doing locally with local dollars around indigent defense and then what we're doing kind of with our drug court. I agree with both Commissioner Reed and Commissioner Kelly around the fact that like, we have never gotten to the full number in our drug court. I do think some of that is pandemic induced because we had a very unique kind of setup. I think some of that is also because our local defense bar has been hesitant around this new program. And part of the pilot was to work with the local defense bar. I think when we use panel attorneys, we have some phenomenal panel attorneys and the attorneys that I've seen interact with our specialty courts are just really wonderful professionals and people, but structurally we have something that does not work towards growth. 
and does not kind of work past the pilot system. So when it comes to our budget, what I would like to see is for us to be very intentional about our funding at the local level and thinking about that from a long-term growth perspective. And then also kind of think through how do we work cooperatively to think about long-term when it comes to felony indigent defense, which I think our work group is doing some great work on, working really collaboratively with bids. We also have to consider how we engage with the court since what we're doing is ultimately giving a budget to the court and the court gets to make those decisions. I'll stop there for now. Yeah, so I think illustrative of where I think this is still um, maturing and understanding where we're going to go is the multiple levels of who submitted, you know, whether it was enhanced diversion or whether it was drug court. And it's, we're, I mean, our own conversation is like, which line is this? In? Who is doing this? And I think I'm, I'm supportive of... Uh, institutional defense. I think that I've convinced in all of our conversations and all our work sessions, you know, a lot of the things that Commissioner Portillo said, I, I agree with that. And that's a good thing to do. How we fund it and when we fund it, I think is where um, I, I just, I, I want us to spend more time and, and not jump quite. So maybe I'm just a little more hesitant to jump so quickly to one solution just yet. And I want us to keep, I love the work that the CJCC work group is doing. And I, I really appreciate that. Do you just want to clarify, it is not a CJCC work group. It is a work group of the county commission that was brought together by some CJCC players. Sure. Okay. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I just, I think, I just want to see that longer. My worry about drug court is if they, if, if we fund half of it now and we get that, I would expect them to come back to us and say, we've got a whole lot more clients. That would be a great problem to have. You know, we have a whole lot more people coming back. Um, we really could have used 10. And then I would say, yeah, we need to talk about either doing fund balance this year, increasing the mills for next year. So we make sure we have enough or using it out of some of these operational funds. Um, I, I just want to continue to see the relationship with bids and with our institutional defense work group to continue to mature. I 100% hear you on the like big change is hard. Where I am really concerned is that what we have right now is we have structures set up that do not allow us to build capacity or grow. And I think we have a lot of consensus and agreement that what we have now doesn't work structurally. If we don't start moving towards funding in a way that allows us to build that capacity and allows us to restructure things, we're just doubling down on the system that we currently have. So I, I think I'm at the point where I think we've actually talked about these things for a lot longer than maybe kind of surface level, because these have been conversations that have happened in our community I remember these conversations when I was an undergrad. So like these are conversations that have happened for a long time. We have finally got them elevated to the level where we can make some change. And if we don't start moving towards that change, we're just continuing to institutionalize our current practices that aren't working. We can continue to work with bids. Bids is a separate process that's state funding that we will never touch when it comes to how that bids piece is funded. We may supplement at some point long-term. There are counties that certainly do that. That is not where we are at today. What I want us to do is at least break off the chunk that is ours, that is local, and that has to do with these kind of developing specialty programs and say, let's structure this in a way that we have long-term capacity building built in from the beginning. Because we've had these pilots that have shown us there are some holes. So we need to shift, like, change it up from what we're doing pilot-wise to real implementation. I'm just trying to track between drug court and enhanced diversion and an institutional defense. So I, I know that. And I would say that I think we need to think about 
institutional defense around misdemeanors locally and our specialty courts and specialty programs collectively because that's where local dollars are going. So I think it does make sense to talk about the local dollars as a whole. Correct. And so, uh, okay. So if we're talking about institutional defense from that perspective in our local dollars, yeah, this is where I think it gets difficult today and where we sit in terms of our, is the eventual goal two institutional defenders, one bids and one a separate institutional defender? Or is there more, or is there, I, I, that's the part where in terms of implementation, I'm a little struggling as to what next steps are. I think that long-term we have to work collectively with bids to see what that long-term goal is, but no matter what long-term the state funds felonies, we fund misdemeanors that could be through one or two institutional defenders. I don't think it necessarily makes sense to have two. I think long-term having one makes a lot of sense. Kansas Holistic Defenders and bids are working very collaboratively. So I think that we can move towards one long-term and still fund ours locally now this year and not wait for the full bids process to be done when it comes to felonies. I agree. I just think we need to be very clear with new agencies when we're funding them that the intent is that they, that this isn't just you've seen how it can work on the human services side, folks get entrenched into how they view their funding. So from what I'm hearing from this perspective is we would need flexibility as we would continue to evolve in this model. Yes. Okay. I just wanted to get clarity on that. But flexibility does not mean continuing with the panel system. Uh, sure. I think um, I get a little lost in the weeds about where all the different um, money might come from and local money, but <clears throat> big picture is um, I support wanting to fund um, an institutional defense office sooner rather than later. I don't I don't want us to wait on that. I think that there's been a, a lot of major work and progress done in the past um, six months, especially, but that there's a lot of evidence for us as a commission to um, to look towards really trying to consolidate that um, those local dollars in in an institutionalized way. Um, and I I mean I would agree with Commissioner Portillo's sentiments that I there's more conversation to be had about the specialty courts and the way that defense is structured in those. So I, you know, like I I already said stated that I don't support the drug court expansion right now. And I also don't support the request for the additional funds for behavioral health court legal defense. Um, and I think that we, an institutional defender's office lends itself to being um, a part of the specialty courts in a, in a way that we need to talk about and that um, I think will help with efficiencies and capacity for, uh, especially to Commissioner Portillo's point, the, the notion of flexibility behind moving community members between the different programs that we offer um, should require, I mean, reliable and consistent um, legal defense and, and real, you know, criminal defense, because ultimately the, the behavioral health court, um, they, we do need criminal defense experience there because people are facing criminal charges. Ultimately, they're facing sanctions for jail time, things that are uh, have legal consequences that um, I think does require some, some particular institutionalized defense. So I, as far as, I don't have any great ideas about how to move around the money or where the money is, um, but I do support wanting to start that now and not wait on bids because I uh, appreciate that the collaboration has to me it's already showing us that the idea is um, there's flexibility in how these off this office or offices will form in our community um, and the yeah I just don't want to wait on the state <laughs> that's really where I'm at so it, it sounds like this body wants to still be involved in how this matures and what this looks like going forward. And in that way, that's why I think Sarah recommended it stay in the commissioner's budget is because then we can allocate it anytime after January 1st, 2022. And so 
to me, I feel like sometimes if we if we allocate the budget to an entity too early, we lose any engagement we have on that, that the individual entity that we're working with, they're going to run with that money, they're going to do what they I'm hearing from the other two commissioners that we still want to be involved in those conversations, that we still want to be engaged in that work. You know, we can't allocate any money. I mean, if we put in the commissioner's budget, we could do it the first week of January if that's where it is. But up until that time, we can't. Does that is that making sense? I hear what you're saying. I think that there's kind of a difference between just saying, here's a chunk in the commissioner's budget versus, I mean, what we've done with Heartland is saying the Heartland's chunk is in the commissioner's budget. So we continue to have conversations with Heartland. What I want to ensure that we do is that we're moving towards an institutional defender. What we have on the table is Kansas Holistic Defense as an institutional defender. So I'm not comfortable with us saying we're parking indigent defense and drug court money in the commissioner's budget. I'm comfortable with us saying we're parking Kansas Holistic Defender's money in the commissioner budget for conversations around misdemeanor institutional defense and specialty court and enhanced diversion. Um, okay, so and then you're... saying that it, we're going to continue to work with this organization to work out the details, but we're moving towards institutional defense with an entity. So even if that meant that we could still work with that organization, I mean, we could still work with that organ. It's on us to work with that organization. You want to make sure it's Kansas Holistic Defenders. I think that, yes, because we need to have an organization and start moving towards institutional defense. And that's what we've done in this community for years is just kind of say, we're going to do something, we're going to change, we're going to change. And then we don't, like, if we just put it in the commissioner budget, then we don't have a commitment to any institutional office right now. Oh, I, I think we do because it's on us. But it, maybe that's, I mean, just. Yeah. I don't think that I trust that enough. I would like us to put it as a line item saying that similar to how we did with Heartland, we're going to work with this organization to work through how we want to move forward with implementation. So you're comfortable with it in the commissioner's budget? Yes. As, as long, long as, as we label it. As long as we label it. So we add a line. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, my question is more on dollar amount. Um, yeah. And I, I think that what Commissioner Reed was getting at is pulling some of the indigent defense money from the district court budget that currently funds misdemeanor defense. It can't be all of it. We will need to continue to have panel misdemeanor attorneys. And then what we set aside in the current commissioner's budget and some of the drug court money. So you're comfortable, are you comfortable with the, the money that's currently allocated to district court staying in district court for the time being, or do you want it reallocated as a part of this budget process? It sounds like we need to reallocate it as part of this budget process and have more conversations with district court, Kansas Holistic Defenders, and the commission about how this might move forward. Okay. So your request would be to take 250 and have it on 250 of reallocated criminal justice operating funds and then 2175 from the district court legal defense. I want to make sure that's what we're saying. Could we do 200 from district court indigent defense and 250 that's currently in the commissioner budget because that's inclusive of indigent Request defense. for 425, so I. Oh, not for all for Kansas Holistic Defenders. Yeah, oh, okay. I, a portion of that, but then. We just do the Kansas Holistic Defenders first because I'm yes, very yes. confused. Then let's do 250 and 175. Okay. Yes. That's your proposal. 250 from commissioner's budget you're saying and 175 moved from district courts which can, since I don't have it in front of me will you tell me what that the total number of the district court 490 okay. now with the additional funds for drug court and behavioral health court okay. indigent defense so there's the proposed budget has 490,000 for legal defense I'm just lost a little bit that's all I'm that's why I'm shaking my head <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out that 
the amount that we're taking from district court is the amount we've set aside for misdemeanor defense for panel attorneys. It's not less than amount. that. It's okay. not the whole and amount. The whole amount, the whole amount for, for all specialty courts and misdemeanors is $490,000 in the district court budget. This would take 175 of that oh, okay. and move it to the board of county commissioners to a separate line item for institutional defense. I'm fine with that. Okay, great. We've got that piece. Yeah, and then we'll talk about drug court. And I would say too, while, while Cammie's writing that down to make sure that we've got it, um, we, we can continue to have these this fall. Remember last year when we had set some funds aside thinking there were CARES Act ARPA funds. So we can make some of those determinations um, this fall yet. And then so that we're ready January 1 to implement those types of projects. So then on, are you ready, Kim? Because she's got to take it out of district court and then move that piece. Um, in terms of drug court, enhanced drug court and enhanced diversion, let's it, talk about that. Yeah, and it sounds like, and I agree with my fellow commissioners, we are not ready to talk about increases in drug court because they have not reached their pilot number. I think that for me, the important part is for us to work through the structural things that we learned during the pilot, which one of that is the, around criminal defense. The other is that this is a, I don't, I'm still not quite understanding why our drug court is more expensive than almost any other drug court I've ever seen in my life. Um, but I think we need to continue to think through how we can work towards efficiencies when it comes to services and treatment as well. So I'm fine with us saying, let's keep some funding in the commissioner's budget and continue to work on growth of the drug court. Yeah, the, the smaller size I think is actually a bit of leverage to say, how can you make this work with a little less funding? And I think if they, if they do hit their maximum number, which I think would be 20 now, they could come back to us and sort of say, let us show you how we got to here and what those dollars were. Um, so I, I hear what you're saying about, this seems really expensive. Um, and, but I, I would just need, I, I would like more discussion about why it's so expensive. And part of my reducing that number was to see, you know, would that put some pressure to see if we could do it for a little less. Cami, can you bring my attention to the right line item or Sarah? If you... <clears throat> the 250,000 set aside. So I guess I was thinking about the, um, what else was in, there was something else we talked about this morning that I was trying to find that you said Sarah was meant to be included in the drug court set aside besides just that 180. So it's the 181, thing. it's the 32 from DECA. 32 from DECA, okay. And then is Thank that um, I mean, and line what I would, 80, the one FTE yes. for? Yes. Okay. And I would say, so in April, I got a request for $80,000 for a physician more than 100, 181 for drug court. And then I got this other request for DECA. And I, like I said, could not figure it out. All the information came late. I set aside 250 in the commissioner's budget. And it is representative of all of those things, but not on any one of them specifically. So I, I would say in addition to just whatever we put aside, they're gonna come back this fall. And we have to, you know, honestly, as soon as we can to have a more in-depth conversation about where we're at and what is planned, because you have April materials in this notebook and you have June materials mm -hmm. in this book from when they continued to work on this project and in terms of those types of things. And, you know, there's a lot of detail in here and Pam had a lot of conversation about that, about how DECA works really hard to find other payer sources. So they've never hit their budget because they're able to find other payer sources. We need time to go into that, have some more conversation, figure out, are we getting the same thing out of Burt Nash? What are those conversations? How does that impact not just drug court, but behavioral health court and have those conversations? So, I mean, to me, this is one of our top priorities for this later this, for the last half of this year is 
enhance conversations about those, whether you expand them, whether you decide how much funding they need or, or what, we need to make sure we're understanding as to where we're, what the, what's happening now. Does that help? Yeah, thank you. Um, I, I think I heard you say 20 participants, Commissioner Kelly, currently the capacity is at 15 if we didn't bump them up at all, but your suggestion is to give them a portion of their request and see if they can get it up to 20 in the next year. Am I understanding that right? When we say give them, yeah, yeah. I think that that's a really complicated thing because are we giving it to criminal justice services or are we giving it to the district court or are we giving it to DECA? Drug court is ultimately at its core a collaborative process and we don't have a drug court, a designated drug court administrator that's doing that budget separately. So I think the give them is a bit of a misnomer. What it sounds like we may be able to do is set aside that amount of like, here's what all those pieces would be to get a rough estimate to get up to 20 and let's have those conversations in the fall. And that would include DECA funding, CGA, CJS funding and district court funding. Yeah, I think as it's currently standing, the way it, it's mostly funding for DECA and criminal justice services. I don't think district court has any additional expenses planned as a part of this. So, but I, I totally think I understand what you're saying in terms of um, keeping it in the commissioner's budget for the whole project and then, and then we continue to have discussions. Eventually, generally is how we budget is, is it will go to, it'll go to CJS. And eventually, whenever you decide on a number, it will go to CJS. Okay, so we'll keep 200K, 200,000 in the commissioner's budget for drug court. And then we will have lots more conversations. Are we all comfortable with a number 200K? How did I think, you decide on 200K? I thought that's sorry. where you were at. Well, nope. so Commissioner Kelly had a bit of a smaller number. I think that I'm not sure that all of the things that I thought were important, like that oh, additional sorry. PO, and some, I, I think 200K is a perfectly fine number to set aside, but I'm not sure that that is something that we are all in agreement on. I wanna only make sure that we're not agreeing to fund the additional PO and additional DECA services with anything other than that 200K. So that'd be something, that's where we would have those discussions. Yes. And it sounds like none of us are in agreement with BHC increase, because I would like the BHC discussion to also be a part of those funds or really indigent defense. Uh, agreed, there is no increase for behavioral health court built in. Cool. There's just a reallocation. So Commissioner Kelly, would you be okay with 200,000? Yeah, as long as it stays in the commissioner's budget because then we might not do 200,000. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry, sorry I jumped the gun, but thank you. That is very helpful. I appreciate walking through all that. Um, the next one I am seeing is County Clerk. And I think this number is incorrect. Didn't Jamie yeah. tell us this is like 11,000, not 35? No, but it's got benefits. Well, I, the, the number was 1554. Okay. I said weekly and I reduced it by the amount of this part time and health benefits. Okay. So 35 is correct. So 35 is correct. It's because our benefits cost $22,000 for this position. We have very expensive benefits. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think it's a good thing to fund. I think we need it, certainly, um, just where we're paying for it, whether it comes out of mills or, you know, did commissioners have thoughts of, did you want to increase the mills to make that happen? I'm fine with taking this out of economic development funds. I'm fine with taking this out of CJ with the criminal justice operating budget. I don't think that we need to increase mills to fund this. I think we have room in either of those lines to take it, but I think it's vitally important that we do it. And I'm still concerned it's underpaid. I also um, supported both those positions. I don't know if I have a strong opinion about source of it. I just thought that, um, I mean, I think that I indicated them as, um, ongoing and mill levy increase. Um, and, and maybe we can get to the 
So because of the additional revenues that we programmed into for the general fund, you know, the conversation about what comes out of criminal justice operating versus mill levy, you know, I think if, if you, you, you're indicating your support, if you're indicating your support for it, then we can come back and look at all those things at the end, because there was also, we've, we've, some things have shaken to the good there as well. Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine. I like the 11,000 number a whole lot better, Cammie. So if we could get it to that. No, <laughs> okay. So we'll, we'll include that and then we'll, and we'll come back as to make sure we're clear on sources of funding. So the next one that would be the criminal justice services, the first line was for the additional, no, all right. Yes, that needs to now be removed because that is, be removed yeah. It's built into drug court. Mm -hmm. The 150 there that Commissioner Portillo is showing is really part of that drug court conversation. Mm -hmm. The minus, though, is reflective of not doing the enhanced or the embedded Heartland Raid Act coordinator. Yes. So that's that was that's not where a part we need discussion. Court. Yeah. So we need to have a, a fresh conversation on that. Again, I think that this is, I think the position sounds very interesting. Embedding someone from Heartland Raid Act into, into our criminal justice services, I have some real concerns with what that means our folks are doing. If it's a capacity issue that probation officers have too high of a caseload to connect their clients to resources, then I think we need to handle that capacity and training issue as a capacity and training issue. When it comes to a handoff, I think that that's also something that we need to be working towards a handoff to community services that do not involve our criminal justice organizations because eventually folks are going back to the community. And I think having that community person embedded with a criminal justice agency kind of connects the idea that you only get services when you're a criminal justice client. And I find that very problematic just from an overall philosophy of care perspective. I recognize that folks have put a lot of thought into this. I think that we need to have a lot of collaboration. I think if Heartland Raid Act needs another position to help re-entering clients or clients that are transitioning from community corrections, that's a fine thing for Heartland Raid Act to ask of us for their organization. It is the embeddedness within a criminal justice agency that I am really opposed to. So I left this one blank with a question mark because I, um, well, I think I shared the concerns that Commissioner Portillo has about the embeddedness. Um, it, I didn't go back and rewatch to confirm my memory of this, but I feel like it was said in our hearings last week that um, there, that this would be unique, that it's uh, unique to have somebody embedded in this way. There are other agencies that have some embedded within the criminal justice system. They are not the same as what is proposed here. And I think that's the, the supplementals that we got were not the same as this request in front of us. Yeah, I think, um, I think those are, that's something that gives me pause for concern and have, raises more questions for me and um, about the, both the efficiency and the um, logistics of it. And I also think I, I felt like I wasn't, it didn't seem clear or narrowed enough who this position would be in place to support specifically. It kind of felt broadly defined like it could be kind of anybody um and it covered all the bases with a primary substance use disorder um, severe and persistent mental health concerns homelessness issues like it to me it seemed like it was describing perhaps a, a fairly large portion of people that are receiving criminal justice services so having one position that 
is maybe seen as like taking the lead or at the helm of those assessments and that care coordination does give me concern about um, what that looks like for the rest of the, the adult services officers and everybody else working in that office and what those numbers would really look like. How, how controlled would that capacity be um, for who this one person was getting referred to base versus how is everybody else, I guess, sort of the work of everybody else's supervision div divvied up. So ultimately, there are just a lot of question marks there for me that I don't feel comfortable putting up about $100,000 towards right now. And this wasn't, I think that there was some confusion as to whether this was a clinical position or not, but it's more expensive than a probation officer position by about $20,000 a year ongoing. And they one of the benefits was it was clinical, there could be diagnoses, but then it was maybe this position isn't clinical, but they'd work with other clinical positions. I just don't think this was fleshed out enough because our probation officers can do a number of assessments that aren't clinical. Risk needs assessments are a part of what adult services officers do all the time. And so if this isn't a clinical position, I don't see how this does anything other than transfer work at a more expensive rate and outsource it. I'm fine taking it out. Okay. So that that will be taken out and then we will reallocate those funds back to CGS operating because that's where they came from initially. And then we'll talk about it at the end. And, and from what I'm hearing there, I do want to follow up, you know, with Pam in, in terms of some of those conversations in terms of, you know, what I don't, I, I'm not hearing that you're not supportive of additional work and capacity in that department if that need is what is met. We just may need to do a little bit more due diligence in terms of lining out where that's coming from, who that's allocated to, or how it will work with other community partners, what those bases are. Am I reading you all correctly in terms of 100%. That? If okay. there is a capacity issue in that office, I want to make sure we're giving them all the resources that they need to provide stellar service to their clients. And we need to think about exactly what that capacity looks like. I would concur and I would add that I think um, the other piece of it that gave me pause or concern was that, uh, that it's a contract, um, which is a different kind of investment to me than an investment in the capacity of that office and Douglas County staff yeah. versus a contract. Yeah, I, I hear you and I think, you know, not that you need like some sort of explanation for me as to why I put this in the proposed budget. Um, I found these conversations on this topic really interesting and in, and to the perspective of where we are. So like it's it's honestly been one of the real kind of takeaways for me in terms of my perspective moving into it. You know, I think there's some conversations about we've seen Heartland Great Act work really effectively in, in a variety of in our behavioral health space. And the thought was like, hey, let's just do it here. So, but obviously I think there's a lot more under the surface in terms of some of those conversations, but I, I'm not, I also don't want anyone to take away from this conversation a lack of support for Heartland Radak and the, and the work that they're doing in terms of case coordination throughout our community. The question is just where is the appropriate place for this contract service in the community and where's the appropriate place for this work in our staff and, and our criminal justice work, right? Exactly. Okay, I appreciate that, okay. So the next one, I, you got it? District court. Yes, the next one is district court operations. And there were two to add the additional staff position for the programmer. I'm fine if this comes out of operations. Okay. Boy, you guys are bad. Um, all right, so the next one we get into is the Bioscience and Technology Business Center. And there's a request to, to decrease this to $500,000. Um, I wanna verify, yeah, there are a number of, I think you took this out of the right spot. Okay, because when I added it up, all of the BTBC funding, it looked like we have bioscience buildings as well as, um, the BTBC funding, I don't want to remove anything from the buildings that we are supporting. I do want to remove some from BTBC. Correct. What I had meant to do, and, and at some point in time, and it may not happen before we wrap up the budget, is a re, um, 
I'm not sure how much we have left on um, the special, the bioscience special building bond and the spec building bond, how much longer we're paying on those. So I just, we need to, what? Okay, so we just have a few more left on those years too as well. Yeah, and I guess I just want to explain my thinking on this a bit more. So between those building bonds, buildings, and BTBC funding, we're spending over $400,000 a year, which is in excess of what we're spending on Peasley Tech. I think, again, I just want to reiterate, I think BTBC is a great idea. I think that KU Innovation Campus, which is what they're rebranding to, is going to be phenomenal for our community. This is really focusing on development that a number of other universities already have. So if we look at some of the comparisons that they provided, these are in university communities that have invested in this for a long time. So I recognize that this is important for our community. My question is, I don't think, not my question, yes, my argument <laughs> is that I don't think it makes sense for the county to be funding over $400,000 towards biosciences, particularly for an innovation campus that's gonna be built on all endowment owned property. And so my question is, does that really contribute to that commercial property base that we know we need to expand in our community? And right now it, it doesn't, and the plans aren't for it to do that. We're focusing on high wage jobs, which is also important for our community. But we have other economic investments that kind of support a broader swath of our community and support those who have been traditionally marginalized. Peasley Tech focuses on living wage jobs and making sure that folks who are currently unemployed have access to the kind of training that they need. BTBC, I also found their discussion around equity and inclusion really lacking. It was non-existent when they were here for our work session in February. What they put into their budget proposal I found really lacking as well in that it was really focused on women and non-white folks. And when we use the term non-white, it's, well, not inclusive of mixed folks like me. And it's really focusing on a deficit-based understanding of people of color rather than focusing on the structural ways that people of color have been marginalized and kept out of many of these high-income areas like the biotechnology areas, the biosciences, and what we're supporting here. So I think that the organization itself needs to do a lot of work around how their role in our community and how they think about their overall economic contribution to our community. But ultimately, I don't think it makes sense to spend almost half a mil of our mill levy funding this work as a county. I would, I would support that. Um, <clears throat> and I, I mean, just to circle back to kind of the beginning conversations, I, the economic development funds, when I was reading through all of those between BTBC and um, Lawrence Chamber, especially wondering where, if, where some funds could be um, cut from there and reallocated to some social services um, operational support. But, but I wasn't really sure where, where that made sense. And I think I didn't feel like I had a, a structural understanding of the budgets enough to know that. So I, I mean, I'm supportive of it um, and would like to see that, that money specifically go into social services and operational support for um, that kind of uh, um, safety net support and um, arguably some opportunity, a different, a different angle towards economic development and being able to support people through services and resources um, that allows them to maintain some stability. So um, yeah, those are my thoughts. Yeah, I, um, I, I think in order to make our community work in order to be able to fund those um, social services we also have to have a role in economic development I, I this does provide as Commissioner Portia said a lot of high-paying jobs <laughs> um, I, 
originally when I came on the commission, I, I was not, um, I didn't really understand the purpose of the BTBC. And as I have been on the commission and have been engaged in talking to them about the work that they do, um, I, I think we're pretty unique and their numbers show us that they are getting that economic development. And I think we have to continue to support that. Um, you know, it may be two against one here and that may just be how it goes. Um, but I, I do think they play an important role in bringing dollars to our community. It, I don't know that I, I don't, I don't think it stops around the boundaries of KU. I think those, those high paying jobs then live in our community, which buy houses in our community, which pay those taxes in our community. Um, so, I, you know, I, I think it's an important economic driver. Um, I, I, I would, I'd be disappointed to see us not fund them um, the way they've asked. I do just want to make it really clear. I think it is an important economic driver. It is not one I think the county should be investing in because I do think those are high paying jobs that bring high incomes that help the state through state income taxes. I think that they help our community through working with other businesses. But what we're currently spending on all of their work combined is more than we're giving to a lot of other areas. And I think it's not that we don't support them, don't fund them. I think that we're just giving them an outpaced amount of money for the goals that we have as a community when it comes to economic development. So when I, I hear that, and, and maybe this is more than you want at this point, my concern would be is without conversation as to what the impact of this reduction at this late in a budget cycle would be on them, um, it would lead to reduction of services on the part of BTBC, pretty substantial part. If the notion is that you're supportive of as an agency, it's just less about the focus of the county. Um, you know, I, I'm just trying to think of how I have these conversations with that team in terms of the timing and response of that. Just in terms of if they, you know, how does this impact where they are for 2022? I mean, um, we've seen through the local press as well as a video that KU just put out that they have substantial investments from KU Endowment that has over a billion dollars in assets. So I'm not particularly concerned that us pulling back on some of the funding is going to cripple this organization. I think that this is giving them a six month under, I mean, this is a 2022 budget. So this is not an immediate impact. I think it gives them time to budget for this. It gives them time to consider their expansion and efforts. I am not concerned with this being something that will substantially affect services provided to our community in the immediate. I think that it's something that we do need to communicate, that it's a shift in how we're spending funds as a county but I, I'm not concerned with this being too short of notice for the organization. I don't think I'm concerned with it being too short of notice either. I, um, yeah, I, I think I agree with Commissioner Portia's point that it feels like um, there are a lot of other investments being made and support of of the work of BTBC and, and its current rebranding and, and expansion. Um, so I, I mean, it's, I'm interested in, in moving some dollars to direct support of our community members. And ultimately that's, um, that's at the core of it for me. And it feels like this is a space that has a, a lot of money coming to it in substantial ways and that, um, that us shaving money off of that is is not a major as major of an impact um, as could maybe be made with that money and some direct service support um, through our throughout our community and a shifting of investment a bit. I I just like to hear from the organization how this would impact. I mean, it you know. It may not impact them, as you all say. And I think it 
it will, and I'd like to hear from them what that would be. Um, yeah, I'd, I think what they're doing is really building quite a lot of economy in our community, and that helps our tax base. I, I, I understand what you're saying about income taxes, and that's state-driven, but like I said, I think those people live here. We have examples of of businesses that started at the BTVC and have moved off the BTVC campus and are now operating in Douglas County. Um, I think there are also businesses in Douglas County that, that are here because of the access to those companies. So um, yeah, we just maybe see differently about this. And I'm okay with hearing from them on this. Okay, a along that line, you know, we're doing lots of things different. Um, one of the things I, I I would like to give BTBC a call this afternoon and let them know that this is proposed um, since they did not have a budget hearing. And this is really the first sort of public conversation about this. So I'd like to let them know and, and sort of talk about that and see what they can bring forward, knowing that, you know, we're kind of close to wrapping everything up and what that means. But I'll give I'll give those folks a call and let them know where we're headed on this as a proposed and and um, and then we can see how it goes from there. Okay. I had down that we wanted to talk about Peasley. Which one? Oh, sorry. Do you need to plug in? Oh no. I don't have an Apple charger. You have, well, like for a computer, Robin? No, they're not. Yeah, it's not, not for a MacBook. But honestly, with your microphone on, we can kind of still continue. Because we're, we're pretty, we're cruising here. I, what time do commissioners need to leave today? So if we want to, I, as we're, it's 1140. Um, how far do we want to get, try to get today? I mean, honestly, I would say we are, we, I mean, we only have a few more items to talk about, so we could potentially try to get through everything today at least, and then identify what we need to talk about tomorrow. Um, I have a bit more flexibility today. I do not have, I have a hard stop tomorrow at noon, but I have a bit more flexibility today. I don't know. I have until 1230 today. Okay, well, let's just keep going until 12.15 and we'll see how much ground cover we make. And while Commissioner Kelly boots up on his phone, <laughs> we'll continue. I'll you just, can just use, use the, the microphone mic. and say my name every yeah. time. Yeah. Next time I'll remember. Oh, my it's so hardwired and I don't know if I can move that laptop without messing everything up. Please don't touch the computer. Did you wanna talk more about Peasley? There were conversations. I didn't hear Commissioner Portillo that you wanted to change a dollar amount, but maybe you did. I, or Commissioner Kelly. I think had, it was Commissioner Kelly oh, who I'm wanted sorry. to have a conversation about that. Yeah, I just, I mean, it. I look at the amount that we're um, committing to Peasley Tech, which is 400,000. I look at their overall um, fund balance. Um, I think what, I was very involved in Peasley's startup. So I think what they do is great. Um, and I think they're really continuing to grow. This was one of those spots where I would have, where I think our hearings were a little tricky. I would have liked to hear from these groups and ask some questions. And we did that on purpose and that was a conscious choice. But it was one of those spots where I wanted to sort of dig in deeper. So if we're bringing in BTBC, I, I guess I would ask, can we bring in Peasley as well, just to sort of talk about you know the weight of those two what their expansion plans are they've done a lot of development at peasley tech and so um you know three hundred thousand is their base debt every year they bring in quite a bit of dollars from um, tuition and so I, I just want them to walk us through their budget there and is that a is that a reasonable um you know we just sort of settled on that i remember when it happened we just hit four hundred thousand because that's what it was and i don't know that we've ever really revisited that dollar amount and i i just thought it would be something if we were looking to lower um middle levy and have less impact 
I, th I think that would be something to consider. So I, this is Commissioner Portillo, I am 100% down with bringing them in and having that conversation. I think that they're in a little bit of a different situation where they tried to work with our legislative delegation to become their own taxing district. And I think for a whole host of political reasons in the state house that didn't work out when we thought it would. And so that will be reintroduced next year. This is one where they're trying to completely get off of our budget. So we wouldn't even be funding that 400,000. It would be a separate taxing district. I do think that Peasley provides living wage jobs. They've done a ton with economic recovery. They did make great use of CARES Act. And I think this is another one where there's a potential for ARPA funding. I would be comfortable with potentially reducing this 400,000 a bit. This one may just be very kind of in the weeds. I don't think it makes sense to fund BTBC at a higher rate than Beasley. So I wouldn't be comfortable with reducing their amount at the same amount or reducing BTBC, but I'd be happy to open up those conversations and hear from them as well. Is there a particular amount that you were thinking or did you wanna have those conversations? With no, members? and I, I appreciate you adding the ARPA part in there because I wondered if there was a place for that in there when we think about, um, you know, retraining workforce, you know, we're a high service industry community. And, and, you know, could we talk about the number of businesses that have closed that are service industries and changing those things over? Um, I, I know, uh, thanks for bringing up the um, state move. And I was very hopeful about that. It looked like it was going well. And then all of a sudden it sort of didn't. And um, I am really supportive of what Peasley does 100%, but I, I just think it's fair to revisit those dollar amounts each year, especially if we're talking about the county's role in economic development and how we think, um, you know, what are we more focused on um, retraining and, and that kind of economic development and not business attraction. Maybe that's the focus of this county commission. Um, and I, I just thought it would be good to bring it up and have a conversation about it. Let me see if I can get Kevin to come tomorrow morning and see if he's available to be here. Okay, so the next one I see is at the top of the next page is sustainability. Yeah, so this one is one where I really would like us to have kind of more of a conversation because I think that what Jasmine put together was really interesting. It sounds like this may be an area where we need to have more conversations with our partners at the city to see you know, what their long-term investments and plans are. The city did talk about this quite a bit in their strategic plan, but they are only funding 40% of one and a half of the positions in that, of one, okay. And we have 1.5, we have 2.5 currently. We fund one completely, okay. So yeah, I would just like to see kind of I put some money here just to say, let's park some money here so we can have that conversation about do we wanna separate out our sustainability offices? How do we wanna think about growth there? I think that they are, they don't have the capacity to do all the things they're being asked to do. And that's something that um, I just wanna make sure that we're thinking through what are our goals and values as a community and how do we wanna move that forward long-term? But I don't have strong feelings about it in any way or any money amount yeah i don't <clears throat> i don't have any strong strongly formed opinions yet um i defaulted to selecting the one um option that was recommended or included by you sarah um the where did i the 192 um but i not necessarily because i have a preference for that and would agree that it's a more conversation needs to be had um, <clears throat> about the structure of that. And so I, that's why I selected that 192 um, and put that in because you had included that and kind of defaulted to that because I couldn't land strongly on one side of the fence or the other, I guess. I, I just think we got to do more work on this. I'm not ready to to pull the trigger on any of these yet. I think we've got to have more conversations about the city. I am very concerned about the city. Um, I, I think Douglas County should be very proud of the work that they did in sustainability early on. I understand that the city, that's one of their strategic plan goals. 
I don't want it to overshadow the work that we're trying to do in sustainability. Um, I think the shared position may be problematic, but I, I think, and this is gonna come on the, on the, on the planning discussion as well. I think we ha need to have more conversations about it before I'm ready to commit a mill levy dollars to, to moving forward with the plan here. I'm just not quite sure where it's at yet. So, so an option could be to put money in the commissioner's budget, similar to how we've done with other things that are not quite fully formed yet, because honestly, like I have to have a line to put it on. So until we're, so, you know, if there is a desire to reserve some capacity, uh, I would recommend putting it either in the commissioner's budget or my budget until we figure that out, if that's the direction you want to go. Well, I guess our two pieces, one is kind of preserve capacity, one is create new capacity. It sounds like we don't have a consensus on building new capacity at this point, but I do just want to make sure that we have space so that we can have those conversations with the city. Could we agree to set aside the amount that it would take to preserve capacity, which would be the amount that the city is currently contributing to the Joint Sustainability Office and just put that aside yeah, with that. as we have those conversations? Yes. So we could, so what you're saying is the amount the city pays us for those positions, for that 0.5 position yes. that she's talking about. But if they didn't pay us anymore, and we were to do that on our own so that we would not go down in terms of at least, I mean, technically that's an increase in capacity because 40% of the work is happening at the city. But it's a real but, person. But that's what I hear Commissioner Portillo saying. Just as a set aside, not committing those dollars, but setting it aside while we have those oh, conversations. It's only $45,000. It's $45,000 that we receive from the city of Florence for this work. Because we have some of the benefits, so that would fall into the EB fund. So 45 plus. Mm -hmm. Would we be okay if taking that, if that happened? Because I see, I think I understand. Let me say back to Commissioner Kelly. Uh, I think what you're saying is if the city decided to pull out of our agreement with them, we want to make sure we have dollars to to fill that gap, is that what you're saying? That we wouldn't let our department fall. I, I'm supportive of that. I'd be interested hearing from Sarah, maybe if you think that's a fund balance thing, or is that something we would want to do a mill levy for? I mean, yeah. I, I mean, eventually it would be an ongoing need. Yeah. But I do agree that it's a little early yet, and 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 I, you know, and obviously, you know, I, this is we're not saying that this county is necessarily interested in this. Is, we're just I don't want to the send the message. interested in having conversations. Yes, we're just, we're just trying to make sure we have capacity to account for that if, if that need were to arise. Um, I, I will tell you, and I think as I mentioned early on in this conversation, I, I'm always, I love planning ahead. So anything we can do to plan ahead, I am supportive of. And if we don't need to over the next year, it, we have extra room to make that work. Um, of the agreements to work on with the city of Lawrence, this was not one of them that I thought necessarily would, would necessarily get completed this year. If it did, it would be late and we would be able to talk about what its impacts would be on the 2023 budget and the 2022 re-estimate. So it, that's the reason why it just sort of did not get accomplished at this point, but I'm all for capacity, but I, I wanna make it very clear, particularly with the paper in the room, that we're not signaling that we are trying to separate our sustainability offices. We're simply trying to plan for any sort of contingencies that might happen as a result of ongoing discussions with the city of Lawrence. Since this wouldn't come up until the 2023 budget, since it sounds like it's pretty low in the priorities of It might, I mean, it's just so hard for me to say as to when we're gonna to get to what, you know. But it sounds like we could potentially take it from fund balance if we get to that point and right. then have that conversation in next year's budget at, rather at than doing the set aside, even though it would be ongoing expenses. Yeah, at 45,000 plus benefits, it's it's yeah. pretty, that amount's pretty We can manageable. absorb that. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty manageable. Then I'm comfortable with just taking this off for now and dealing with it later. Okay. If that's okay with my fellow commissioners. All right. That sounds great. Commissioner Kelly, did you talk, of, was your $100,000 removal for open space? Yeah, because that was one time. Yeah. Got it, yeah. but we cleared it up. Got it. Okay. 
Um, before we wrap up, so I want to keep an eye on the clock. I do want to talk about what, what else we learned from the city in terms of LDCFM, but let's keep trying to move through this. Uh, the next one would be the planner position. And, and I know we you had some initial conversation about that. I, I, I think I stated when we discussed this with that group, I believe this position is needed regardless of our arrangement with the city of Lawrence. I think what we talked about are some of the things that are just inherent to unincorporated area planning and the enhanced workload on that department. I think this is needed regardless of, of whatever we work out in terms of that. However, um, if, if, the, if you all need additional information, if that's unclear, uh, I did not, you know, it was, I don't, this is not an A or B scenario. But in my view, this was, what do we need to support our work on our end, which, and then we will still have to work out our arrangement with city of Lawrence. I hear you on that. And I, I think that it's become increasingly clear to me that there is not enough capacity for us to do the work that we need to do in unincorporated areas. It's county specific work. Right now we do have a joint planning department. And I think that what commissioner Kelly has brought up is that the boundaries are not clear and the workload allocation is not clear. I personally think it makes sense to fund this, but then move that planning discussion to the very tippy top of our list of city agreements, maybe right behind emergency communications, but in that top echelon of things we need to work through this year, knowing that there is a capacity issue. They've asked they didn't ask any, they planned on adding a bunch of planners without kind of consulting us for that one sixth piece that we do pay for. I think we, no one included that in their potential budget. So I am fine saying we need to do this, but I think then that does mean that we have to work out that agreement with the city because we're then saying, we know that the current joint planning department isn't doing work that we need done in the county. We can fund it on our own, but then we have to figure out why are we funding one sixth of the city county planning department. Yeah, I'm <clears throat> I'm supportive of this position because it it felt like a, a compelling argument to me that the workload has increased in a variety of ways since the since the regulations went into effect a year and a half ago. And so that has really changed what the workflow um, of their days look like. And in my brief bits of time spent with their office um, so far this year, which was very generous of them to give me some of their time and let me kind of shadow the work they do. Like, I mean, it's a it's a high volume, very high traffic um, office and a lot of work that does feel um like we just we haven't had capacity to do that work and they've just been managing um and uh, you know to commissioner kelly's point i do wonder if some of that work makes sense within the current city county um planning department but it does seem to me that there's enough of the work specific to our regulations put in place by county commission of, in February 2020 that um, that warrant this position and really cementing their capacity um, for now and determining, I agree with Commissioner Portillo that that planning conversation is, um, is top of the list to me because the city has made such substantial changes this year and um, it, their staff has increased exponentially. Um, and we are all communicating a lack of clarity about what, um, who does what work and how the county's work is um, prioritized or managed. And so I, I just see there being a, enough work for us to build in some dollars to have permanent capacity, um, especially on the heels of those regulations and the text amendment that is coming before us. And I just think that it's going to continue to create work for that office. Yeah, I, I guess I, I don't see the regulations as being our regulations versus their regulations. It came out of a joint planning process. Um, the text amendment goes through the joint planning department. <laughs> they, the city makes decisions that impact their desire not to annex has impacted our 
I mean, we wouldn't have this demand on our planning department if it wasn't for the city's resistance to, or I'm not sure they're resisting annexing, they just wanna see a community benefit before they annex. So I, I think, um, I, th I think we just have to be really clear about, I think this sends mixed messages. They ask us for 148,000 to support their, the joint planning staff. And we turn around and say, well, we're not gonna pay for that, but we are gonna buy, we are gonna pay for another planner. And I, I just think that that makes those agreements challenging. Um, and so I just wanted to draw our attention to it. I, the work that Tanya and her team do, Tina out there, they are overwhelmed. I get that, that the demand is there. And, and I really respect the work our, our planning staff does. I just wanted us to pause and make sure this is how we wanted to enter into that discussion and that agreement, because I think this, if we do fund this position, if I was on the city side, it would give me pause. Like, or have you already decided that you're, that you've made a move here? Um, so I just wanted to think about it. I'm, I'm fine including it, but I, I just wanted us to think about the repercussions of that. I would push back on the sending mixed messages just a little bit, just in that we did have the discussion with the planning department about their long-term goals of what they're gonna get done and what they can't. And I think that part of what I saw from that conversation is that we're still gonna have a capacity issue on the county side. And so I do think we're entering into those conversations saying we need some clarity about how do we think through capacity and work goals. I don't think it necessarily signals that we want to break these, break up this joint department. I think it does signal that there is an issue here and we need to also look out for the workload and capacity of our staff and the retention of our staff. Because I am really concerned about if folks get burnt out and they leave, that's gonna be even worse on us long-term because we have a lot of work we need to get done. Fine with where we are? Okay. Then really the last item here is just fund balance. And I guess what I would suggest is that we kind of move through everything here and make sure we've you're seeing, you get a copy of the spreadsheet, you're able to take a look at it. We have conversations about criminal justice operating in mill levy, and, and then we can like finish up with fund balance conversations tomorrow, unless there's something specifically I'm missing there that two commissioners wanted to talk about. No, for me, this okay. was really a placeholder of trying to see kind of where some of that capacity was, but I'd like to see the updated Excel spreadsheet before committing to anything around fund balance. That, okay, that sounds good. We did um, get updated information from the city of Lawrence late Friday in terms of uh, some, some reductions to costs for LDCFM. And Cammie, maybe you could, and, and a couple other, so maybe you could just kind of give us a quick rundown of what we learned and then we can figure out how to incorporate it. Cammie, Carrie just said she can't hear you. Would you please? No. Okay. Ooh, you can hear me now. Uh, okay, so we got some updated numbers from the city for planning and the health department uh, facility maintenance number and for LDCFM. The planning number was an increase over what we budgeted of $65,666, um, which uh, was about half of the increase that we had before. Um, and then the health department facility maintenance is actually um, $5,500 less. Um, I would recommend leaving that where it is. We pay actuals on that and last year we went over what they estimated for the budget and we had to amend that. So um, that being that small of a difference at this late in the game, um, not sure what you wanna do with that. The, the big one was the LDCFM number and I know they had some changes in what they were doing on their end of the budget. 
um, and it came in $320,000 lower for our portion than they had estimated. So for right now, I have a placeholder on this line 124 for the transfers out on that transfer to um, ambulance at $300,000 while I made sure that this was the exact number because I hadn't taken the time to look at this it coming in so late on Friday. So um, just roughly looking at it is $320,000 difference. So. so our commissioner's comfortable with us showing that that reduction in the transfers out, which will impact the mill levy. So we'll just put it there for now because for the ambulance fund, but you all know what that's related to. Okay. Um, we don't have to discuss this now. We can certainly pass along what we receive from the city in terms of planning, uh, but then maybe that's a topic for conversation tomorrow if there would be a desire to add that that additional request from them or in some sort of placeholder fashion until we uh, are able to work out the planning agreement. So you might, you might be thinking about that piece, the 60, the new number of 65,000. I, and honestly, what you will get from us is what we have. Um, I don't have a basis for where that, that number came from um, and why 65,000. We can try to get some of that information before tomorrow but um, we'll just do the best we can. So if we, we will send you the sheet, you'll get time to take a look at it. I will try to reach out uh, today to have conversations about Peasley, see if we can bring Kevin Kelly in tomorrow to talk a little bit about the department, the organization. Um, I'll reach out to BTBC so that they're aware of the conversations if, they have, if they're able to be here or provide us with some information, I'll, I'll ask them to do that. And then we will meet tomorrow to, to review where we are in terms of mill levy and um, criminal justice operating and fund balance. Is there anything I'm missing commissioners in terms of what you wanna see for tomorrow? Well, that all sounds great. And I'm yeah. very impressed with our ability to get through this entire spreadsheet in a first sitting that was I unexpected too. and fantastic. I am too. Um, so if, if we don't have anything else, we can adjourn.